gentlemen, welcome to the AFC East Roundtable. What's up? What's up? I am so excited, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we got a great show lined up for you. All four teams in the AFC East trying to fight in free agency and getting ready for the draft to be the number one team in the division. It is about to go down tonight. I'm excited about it, man. We got the usual suspects, the homie Richie in the house, the homie Dan Mitchell, and the homie Kobe. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? We are all here. Richie thought he could frash me bringing me in solo. You know, your boy's good. You know, this is what I do. This is what I do. But, Richie, that stinks for you to try to do that. Dan Mitchell, your team stinks always. And the New England Patriots have been stinking for the last several years. I am joined by three stinking gentlemen, but I love these guys. I love you, Richie. I love you, Dan. I love you, Kobe. That's why I got the newest product on the market to get rid of your stench, your little stinky stench. It's <laughs> called Mando. See, I said that, that Dan got it. He knows what time it is, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know by now, Mando is a whole body deodorant. Mando is seriously safe to use anywhere on your body, your pits, your packages. I'm just saying, you know, you want to stay clean, your mm. belly button, <laughs> your, your, your crevices and cracks, your stinky areas, stomach folds, all of that, and your feet, Dan. Stomach I, folds, bro. <laughs> <laughs> all of that good stuff, man. But no, in all seriousness, Mando was created by a doctor who saw firsthand how normal body odor was being misdiagnosed and misrepresented ladies and gentlemen mando whole body deodorant is powerful enough for the toughest body odor but gentle enough to use everywhere allowing you to put mando on family jewels real talk without any worry because mando is aluminum free baking soda free cruelty free dye free and vegan all right uh, listen, man, it is proven to control odor better than a shower and soap alone. 12 hours after a shower, the average man grundle odor level was 5 out of 10. Guess what it was with Mando? Zero out of 10. No odor at all after 12 hours, man. You cannot beat that, ladies and gentlemen. And right now, I want you all to get involved because we got a special promotion for you here on the AFC East. You get $5 off your starter pack with code AFC East. AFC East. That Let's is go. your code. Let's go. The cool thing the about this starter pack that I like, honestly, is you get to build it yourself, right? Yes. You, so if you guys click that link and use the code AFC East, it would really support the boys here. We got a new partner, yeah. Mando, baby. And look, it's you can choose between Bourbon Leather, Clover Woods, uh, Pro Sport, Unscented. So we'll, we'll build a little starter pack. We'll unsell it there. Mount Fiji, man. I love that Mount Fiji. We're going to go the Mount Fiji with, with the uh, Invisible Cream Deodorant. We'll do some... Free mini body wash. We'll do the pro, free pro sport. Oh my. 15 mm. And the wipes pack. are insane, bro. And so They're the cool. wipes are insane. So when you're building out your package over on Mando, I want you to ask yourself a couple of questions. Do I have some stinky nads? All right. Well, if you do, <laughs> then get this cream right here. What I'm holding. Are your pits the normal suspect? Get this bad boy right over here, man. It is and on your way out, up. guys. You use the code AFC East. They already have a discount because it's on sale at $35. And you use our code AFC East and you'll get $5 off. So it's basically $30 to get a starter pack of four products on Mando. And if you guys want to support us and what we're building here at, at the AFC East Roundtable, we would greatly appreciate it if you guys can simply click the link at the top of the chat or down below in the description. Build your starter pack, purchase it using the code AFC East at checkout for $5 off. And I promise you, this is really good value. I mean, $30 for these four products, you won't want to miss out. Let's go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's build your package, go. take care of your package. I love it. Man. <laughs> and I love this package. part. We got this is a fun part. Hey, hey, swamp ass people too. Forget about it. Especially about when. Especially when the Jets are about to like wreak havoc on this division, bro. You guys are gonna be sweating. You uh, guys are gonna be go. sweating. You're gonna need Mando, like it's Dolphins fans, especially you guys, Dolphins fans. We you already guys are got in it, the Richie. heat. 
You guys we are in the Miami Heat, okay? You're going to need this product because you're going to be seeing the Jets coming on your schedule and you're going to be dripping in sweat. Be like, oh my God, I got to get this stank off me. Uh, at least you I got that. We already prepare, Richie. We ready to get W's. We're going to be fresh. We're going <laughs> to smell good. When we get our W, we go out and we enjoy ourselves. We don't have to rush home like Jets fans and be like, ooh, I smell bad. So Jets fans, get your mando so you ain't got to worry about it either. Damn. Let's go. That's it, tough. It is what it is. I can't believe the, the thumbnail has, has a bum on the front of it. What is that about? <laughs> Dude, mean, I was thinking bro? the same thing, though. Not a bum, but I was like, ah, we got Mike Williams on here. What are we doing, Richie? Hey, he's what the latest free agency news in the division, is he not? He's the literally. He's turn the on only any... free agency news in the division, apparently. Oh, no. Actually, turn on the uh, any NFL show today. What are they talking about? I couldn't tell you. I didn't turn it on. <laughs> well, every single show <laughs> is talking about Mr. Mike Williams coming to the Jets. So, therefore, he's the thumbnail. I mean, maybe if you guys want to start adding some graphics and some uh, other things to our company, be all by all means. You let me know what you. Do. I know, I know, Colby's capable of it, but Colby, my, Colby so Richie's might upset with us. Bro. Even Colby, Colby, you muted yourself, and so Richie's upset with me and TD. <laughs> I did mute myself, and so we get these passive aggressive lines. I think every single show, he's like, "Hey, well, maybe if you make a graphic, <laughs> things would be good." Well, you're complaining. TD just I'm not you, complaining. Not I'm you. Not, I'm no, no, no. Not complaining. I'm Dan, just the shocked. only reason why I said that is because TD's complaining. That's why. I wouldn't have I'm said that. I'm just shocked. I'm just shocked, Richie. You're, you're so excellent at making thumbnails. I just couldn't believe you put a bum on one of them. Uh, that's what, all I'm saying. It's the trending it. topic. Dan, what was the thumbnail on the huddle? It, by the way. Love it. And so I thought we outsourced those thumbnails to our graphic yeah, we, guy. We do, but I made this one. You see, we well, see he Good wants job. to make sure he promotes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> bro, turn on any yeah. NFL show. What are they talking about today, bro? We're, we're talking about the trending news in the NFL. Well, I don't think it's just Mike Williams, though. I think it's also Mike Williams, Tyron Smith, because I mean, since we were here last week, those are those are two big moves Ooh. in the AFC East. But you yeah, know what? Right, too? I, I will say two big moves in the AFC East that. I think some people are overlooking, but some people are also underlooking. I think both have the ability to be big time plays for the Jets, but that's if they both hit. They're both both past thirty, right? They both don't stay healthy. Uh, Mike Williams, twenty nine. Is he twenty? Okay, he's about to be thirty. The big question being. Are those guys going to be able to get over the hump for the Jets? If they can stay on the field, those are game-changing additions. The problem is, is that neither of those guys are ever able to stay on the field for their respective teams. So, yeah, they're they're good moves for you. They move the needle, but they only move the needle if they're able to stay on the field. Now, uh, one thing I will add as well is that coming off of an ACL tear, I'm probably a bit concerned about the turf over at MetLife. It's probably not going to be the easiest field <laughs> and to go and nurse back an ACL. But I do think Mike Williams will be fine. I sincerely do. I was also on the same boat saying this is an injury prone guy. Not really worried about it. He played most of the games, his career. Two years ago, he suffered an ankle injury in which put him out for, I believe it was the rest of the season, played 13 and then finished out the season on the IR. And then last year, as we know, he tore his ACL. His right leg has been beat to absolute hell. But I will tell you, he's better than like the geriatrics that Aaron Rodgers tried bringing on to the squad and the year before. I think as long as they continue to make sure that offensive line is solid and they have about like, you know, four starter quality depth units within that line, I think things might be pretty interesting for the New York Jets this year. No, and Mike, Mike Williams is good. Mike Williams is good. Don't get me wrong. I like Mike Williams. The problem is, is that Richie, I, I mean, I would assume you probably would feel the same way is that this should not in any way, shape or form prevent the Jets from still going out and trying to make a trade for a wide receiver, drafting a wide receiver high, continuing to add guys. Mike Williams hasn't played a full season since since what, 2018, which was the only season he played a full year. He's not going to play a full season for the Jets. Pin this, pin this video, point blank. He's not going to play a full season for the Jets. He's not someone that you're going to be able to consistently rely on to be on the field. The best availability in sports is availability. So this should not prevent the Jets from going out and continue, continuing to make moves. You're right. We ain't done, baby. We're plugging okay. in all of our holes. <laughs> We're plugging in all the holes to 
give us every single option in the NFL draft that we talked about on the huddle. What do the Jets do in free agency so well? They did not pigeon. We're not pigeonholed now in the NFL draft because if we did not land Mike Williams, what would the conversation be? We must go wide receiver. If we did not sign Tyron Smith, what would the conversation be? We must go tackle in the NFL draft. Now we can take the best player available. And of course, the injury is a concern. The injuries are concerned with every single player in the NFL. Some injury, some players are more injury prone than others, and that's for sure. But the Jets are going in right now the jets have a window and they are taking advantage of that window and getting low risk high reward players let's not pretend this is a high risk this is one year contracts highly incentive deals so if mike williams doesn't play a lot guess what we're not paying him that 15 million dollars we'll use that money elsewhere if he goes down unfortunately same thing with tyron smith so this is something that people need to realize here and i love how that is the topic that's what people are saying that's the only thing because i love to bring up the other hypothetical what if mike williams is healthy what if tyron smith is healthy then what because you look game. around this roster where's a weakness tight end tight end's not a weakness yeah, Ty- i would say it's your biggest Tyler weakness. Conklin? It, it's not i mean it's not i mean it's he, not a strength he can get the job done he can get the job done he's solid he's not top tier i'm not biggest. saying that but tyler conklin not have a drop last year he had like 600 700 yards receiving and bottom barrel quarterback play trust me jets fans are sold on tyler conklin but Still would love to get Brock Bowers in the building. Oh, you know what, Richie? Dude. Richie, here, here's my question to you. So you're on the clock. You're on the clock in what? A little over a month from now. You're in the first round. What are you doing? Are you going Brock Bowers or are you going left tackle? Because respectfully, oh. I know you have Tyron Smith, but it's again, he hasn't played a full season since what, 2015? And it seems like lately, every other year, he's only playing like five or less games. And this past year, he played in 13, which means that this year he's going to be bound to play even less games. So to me, you guys should be looking at your future on the left side to keep Aaron Rodgers protected. While Brock Bowers would be a great addition, Aaron Rodgers loves his tight ends. Tyron Smith's not going to play full season for you too. So who's going to end up coming in behind him? What if he only plays four games? You need a guy who's going to be able to plug in on the left side. I think that you guys absolutely have to go left tackle. Here's the problem. Yeah. Here's the problem. I was just going to say quickly, and Colby, Jets fans are equally divided on this debate. Trust me. I don't think fans want tackle. Half the fans want Brock Bowers. I don't think it's smart to go tackle. Here's the problem with that. You go tackle. Who's starting um, game one? Tyron Smith. So you're putting a first round pick on the bench. The Patriots did that with uh with Isaiah Wynn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, yeah. the Jets are win now. The Jets are in a win now mode. They'll be better off yeah. going Bowers and investing in the tackle in the second round yeah. as an the, investment. The Patriots yeah, like, like that mode when they did. Yeah, that, they that yeah I do win. like that take. And so I do like that take, especially since the Jets' offensive line has been literally a carousel for as long as that I can remember. I can't remember the last time that that team has had like a fully healthy unit without having to interchange this position for that guy. Um, this player in this spot, switching somebody out of position to play this just to get by. Um, I feel like they just need to go on ahead and just accept the fact. And they have an uncertain window of how long they can go. Because with Rodgers, I mean, he's on contract for two more years. But will he play those first two years? They don't have a predecessor to Rodgers right now. So, I mean, I think their window is wide open. But let's just say that it's closing fast. And I like I think they should go Bowers 10, in my opinion. It, it's a really heated debate uh, amongst Jets fans. Um, and I really feel like us Jets fans are, you know, it's either we go the long-term approach and get that tackle and really sure up that offensive line for the long run. You have a tackle, learn behind Tyron Smith, one of the best to ever do it. Or you just get crazy and go all in this year and just really try to build a Super Bowl winning roster. And that's what Brock Bowers would do. But at the same time, a tackle getting him, you can say that he may not be on the bench all year because there's no guarantee Smith is healthy, right? So that that's really the whole balance. And it really puts the Jets as a very interesting piece of this entire NFL draft process. But the reality is, like, we're taking these risks on these players and, like, they're, the Jets need depth, and we just need to stay healthy. And now all the hype is back on the Jets train all of a sudden. Now the entire national media is hopping on. We're winning the offseason all over again. And mm-hmm. I like it, but at the same time, it scares me because I remember last you being year. You're timid, man. I remember <laughs> yeah, last year. PTSD. Yeah, for sure. And mm-hmm. seeing what happened, like, it would be a completely different conversation, folks, if Aaron Rodgers stayed healthy all year and we won seven games. But he got hurt in <laughs> fourth snap. 
and we won seven games with our backup quarterback. So it really just comes down to him staying healthy and building this team up. And I, if you're a Jets fan, you should be excited right now. Like they are doing everything. Like what else should they be doing? I feel like this low risk, high reward signings, getting one year contracts on highly incentive deals like a Mike Williams and Tyron Smith. What was the issue last year? Offense. Go invest in pieces that have potential to be booms because I know if they boom, they will absolutely impact this Jets team immediately. They're veterans. You don't need to help them just like develop or anything. They'll be immediate impact for this Jets team right away. So that's why I'm happy with the with these moves. And we had Jadavian Clowney in the building today, and I heard that it went very well. Um, it's not guaranteed that we're going to get him because Jadavion Clowney is keeping Did his mind open. Did you send him a sandwich? No, nah, no one sent him a sandwich. <laughs> he's not sandwich good. We he's not we, sandwich good. We didn't want to overdo it. Shout out to NYJ Matt. He's going on. He's like famous now. Like, I don't know if you guys are seeing it, but like this guy. Was he the guy that, that sent the sandwich? Yeah, he's he's like, the, <laughs> he's already famous on Jets Twitter. He's like the number one Jets Twitter account. And Verizon post tweeted about him. I mean, like every, every Ian Rappaport. How did, like, how you did name he it, he's being talked about. They're talking about it on SportsCenter everywhere. They're talking oh, about I need to send two a sandwich. Yeah, I mean, there's and context behind the sandwich. Yeah. I mean, you know the story? Bread? I'm going to send two a sandwich, bro. Is that you know, King Cat in, in the building? Is Mike King Williams? Yeah, King, King Cat right? came on the stream last night, man. What up, King? Mike King Williams Cat, ate the sandwich on camera, and he said, this is what got the deal signed right here. Ah, uh, I see eat that sandwich. He ate another one, but it was it's a poor you know, crop. Well, yeah, he had to eat another one because nine hours later, hopefully yeah, they yeah. got him a fresh one. Man, he's still he's still <laughs> tired. Of food. That was pretty dope, though. That he tied. Oh into my! King Cat with a hundred dollar donation. Oh, Thank you so whoa! Much. <laughs> King Cat came on my show today and blessed me with some super chats, and now he's not done. King Cat, he's like three at eleven a.m. King Cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> King Cat, bro. Thank you so much, man. The round table really, really appreciates this. TD is right. We are in win now mode. Offensive tackle class is deep. Grab one later rounds, but get the starting weapon in the first round. And we have offensive tackle on the roster that can fill in for a game or four if needed. Neighbors or Dunze is the pick if, avail if available, preferably neighbors. Yeah, Malik Neighbors is definitely who King Cat wants. He was telling me that on my show earlier today. Where um, will he be available? I don't think he'll be available at 10 per person. So they need to trade up. Yeah, yeah the, Malik Neighbors is not good. good. Or Odunze. I, I think both of them. Honestly, and, and so King Odunze, Cat, I think you would agree. Odunze if if we want to go wide receiver, Brian Thomas would be the one available. Like, I don't think Stay one away. of those top three has fallen to 10. Well, I feel like if you guys want this big outside perimeter wide receiver, because you have Mike Williams, but again, if you want to think longevity behind Mike Williams, or if he's even not going to play a full season, if you want that big body guy on the outside, that's going to be this contested 50, 50 ball catcher. I mean, Roma yeah. Dunes his his NFL comparison is Jamar chase. That would be the guy he's, for you to go. Dude, ahead he's, and a stud. he's a stud. I thought they were comparing Malik neighbors to Jamar. No, I forget who Malik neighbors Everyone was. was. And listen, stop sleeping on some of like those late first and early second round receivers as well. Cause this class is absolutely well, some guys gonna have chips on their like man. Richie, for example, like say for example that like Lad McConkey, like out of Georgia as well, is there in the second round. He would be a perfect fit for several, several yeah. offenses in this division. Love well, was... Xavier Leggett as well. He could potentially be an option for you. Where is yeah, the well... doomsday going? Like, like, where is he projected? He's, Seven, he's eight, ten. not. He's but being mocked to the Bears. He's like a nine. top fifteen, somewhere at, at top nine. 15. Yeah, yeah, he's being mocked to the Bears uh, at nine. The Bears take Caleb one, and the Bears take Odunze nine. I don't know if the Bears need a Dunze. I mean, they got one of the best two wide receiver duos in the NFL. I mean, they surpassed Tyreek and Waddle, but that's another conversation. But I mean, really, outside of those, you're throwing, two, shots. you're throwing shots intentionally. Not stop now. Don't start. Now you <laughs> tell the people you're just playing now. DJ Moore and Keenan Allen. Stop. It ain't even close. No, that's that's wild. Like they, they are building around their quarterback very wisely. Like that's exactly how you get a guy who didn't want to play for you to want to play for you is to get you an actual offense built around you. Like I, I tweeted this out. I said Patriots should be taking a, a little a little lesson from the Chicago Bears right now. Like the Patriots used to be the team that every other team in the NFL was trying to take lessons from their notebook. Now it's the other way around. I'm like, maybe the Patriots should be taking some lessons from, from other teams. No, but yo, well, so that's actually a great segue because I heard something today from a Pats fan. Uh -oh. He's under the impression that regardless of who you pick up at three, and we think it's going to be a quarterback, 
that Brissett's going to be the starter and y'all are going to attempt to sort of groom your rookie and not start him until the following year. Is there any truth behind that or would you like it? What? Yeah. So, so me personally, I think it all depends on who's there. I'm personally under the like uh, assumption and I'm behind sitting your rookie for as long as they need. And I've heard this debate among like professional analysts, beat reporters in Boston being like, well, if you're selecting a guy in the top three, then you believe in him and he shouldn't be sat. No, 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 no. It shouldn't necessarily matter where you draft a guy. If you need to sit him for a half a season, a week, a full season in order to be your guy for the next 10 plus years, then do that. Mac Jones, when he came to New England, thought that he was going to sit his first year behind Cam Newton. And then on roster cutdowns, Cam Newton's out and Mac Jones is the immediate starter. Still performed well, but Mac Jones didn't think that he was going to be playing that year. If the Patriots go Drake May, Drake May actually recently came out and said that ideally he would like to sit for his first season in the NFL and learn behind a guy. So if that's the route they go, go with what your quarterback feels is going to make him most comfortable. You do not want to mess up at the quarterback position, especially if you're the Patriots with a top three pick. Don't mess up on that guy. Brissett is a good quarterback. Is he a franchise quarterback? No. Is he a top 10, top 15 guy? No, he's not. But he is a much bigger upgrade than what you had at quarterback throughout the entire 2023 season. So realistically, I could see the Patriots waiting half a season to a full season to end up playing their rookie quarterback. And I'm completely fine with that. How many mm-hmm. times do we have to look at kind of the blueprint on how many quarterbacks have sat and it's worked out well for them, whether that was a month, half a season, a full season, it's some of the best quarterbacks in the game today. So I'm completely behind sitting that guy. If that's the decision that they decide. Kobe Percet winning the Jayden division. Daniel, You're already here first. Wait, we Daniel got another super chat from King not Cat. Gonna sit. King Cat with a 50 burger. King Cat, bro. Thank you so much. I love Brian Thomas Jr. as the most underrated wide receiver in the draft. If the Jets grabbed him, I'd be happy. He could be a trade back, get more draft capital option, grab MTJ at 14-ish, and tackle in the second or third round, depending on what you get for the trade back. So, yeah, Brian Thomas is a player I'd love the Jets to target in a trade back scenario um, for sure. So there's a lot of different options. And the Jets don't have a second round pick, by the way. So I think trading back is a big, 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 big option for them. That's the that might be the move to make so that you can get a second round pick. Yeah. You know, um, you know, try to get, but here's the thing: as long as you, if you all are going wide receiver, I'll say this: if you get one of those top three to four receivers in the draft, and you make Mike Williams your number three, yeah, the, the Jets are ready. I mean, they're, uh, they're ready. I mean, you bringing in Mike Williams already makes you ready. Is just that how long can you be ready with the injury concerns? But you make him your number three. Like, I don't know if you saw the breaking news. The Dolphins are pursuing OBJ right now. All Having right. a guy like that as your number three, see, that that's when, you know, if Tyree goes down or if Waddle goes down, you still got a one-two. So you want your, your most fragile guy that can still be a weapon to be your number three. So if y'all could push Williams down to the number three spot – now we're talking. Now he's more likely to stay healthy because he's not the primary guy. He's yeah. coming in, you know. So no, I agree. And and the de- this the cool thing about this wide receiver draft class is they don't need to get one in the first round to potentially get their number two. This draft class is so deep they can get a guy in the third round, and it could be that mm-hmm. guy. I mean, we've seen wide receivers like get drafted in round two, three, four, five, and be really good immediately. Tank Dell was a fifth round pick. If I don't, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, for Houston, like th- these are, there's so many different examples, and I love this draft class. The Jets are uh, having uh, Brennan Rice on a visit. That's a guy I target in the third round. Like, like give me, him. give me Jerry Rice son on the Jets. Okay, he's um, a big fantastic catch guy on the outside. Yeah, I would love that. So there's a lot of different options that the Jets can go down. King Cat, cannot thank you enough for this super chat, my friend. Really, really do appreciate it. We also have some other super chats. Do Mando work for the Dolphins versus winning teams? <laughs> it does. <laughs> You're going to find out this year because I'm going to be wearing it every Sunday and I'm going to be celebrate, celebrating that W after the game and I'm going to stay fresh doing it. Mm. Let's do it. Jordan with the $5. I'm a diehard Chiefs fan since 2004 with Trent Green and Gonzalez on the field. I respect your guys' challenge and watch it, uh, channel and watch it every Wednesday. Respect. That's awesome, Jordan. Thank you right. so much, man. Well, Jordan Francis. Get excited because your very because your very own roundtable is coming very very soon, my friend. Here in just a couple of months. Yes, we are working around the clock. 
And we got to give Dan Mitchell the credit here because it's his role, his job here at Roundtable Sports is to find the greatest content creators to represent each team. And he's been absolutely killing it, Dan Mitchell. Thank you, Dan Mitchell. It. But listen, but listen, please, please, man. Dan listen, I know the Chargers, and so I know the Chargers don't have fans, but like, please find me a Chargers YouTuber. Dan, yeah. you, don't, you don't know about any? I know, I, I know like, <laughs> guys that always no, I do, but like one's like a rock star and like he like leaves me on red all the time. So I didn't find somebody else. <laughs> There's there's yeah. another guy. There's another guy that's been popping up a lot. So I'll hit you up after and see if you've reached yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Let me know. I'll talk to you about some people. Go ahead. Yeah, gotcha. Well, thank you, Jordan. We appreciate that. And stay tuned for the AFC West roundtable coming soon. Mateo with the two dollars. Fins will be last with their three dollar store players. Hater. Mm. Mateo, you don't have to be a hater. You can fear <laughs> us without hating. Angelo with the buck. Thank you, Angelo. <laughs> appreciate you. Angelo Moore with a dollar. We appreciate that. We appreciate that man this has been a lot of fun did you guys see the uh the the pff grades that they just dropped for the afc east for uh the free agency grades i did not no i where did, did they, where, where do they post that let's pull they on. posted it on uh instagram did they post it on twitter uh, as well uh hmm. i'm not sure but i can okay. send it it's on pff i can pull it up right now thanks yeah, for not sharing, the, sharing uh, is it on the it website has, or it, it, it's a uh, well I, I don't know about the website but it's on their instagram right now right now it says free agency grades i got it i got it right dan now. mitchell's got it who's got it dan mitchell richie fresh td get plenty of tea ready for bills five times afc east how many times super bowl winner richie fresh <laughs> richie fresh thank you man i'm so exhausted to responding to that Look at Tyron anyway. Smith, freaking uh, the the face B of the, of the Come on, Miami. Come B on, minus Miami. for the Bills. Okay. B minus for the Bills. Look who liked on, the post. Man. And so I agree. Colby yeah. Cochran did. <laughs> That's me. Yeah. What? That? What do you know? B plus. That's freaking That's huge, at Miami. It's what we do. That's what we That's do, cool. baby. That's what you do, baby. B plus. No B plus for the Bills. New England Patriots. They're irrelevant, though. They're irrelevant. The irrelevant. best for last, though. Come on. No, no, no. Give me it, baby. B plus. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I get an A, bro. The Bills are the worst bro, in the division. I That's told crazy. Y'all the Bills are imploding, man. It's over, Dan. Hey, first it's of all, that's free bro. agency grades. That's not ranking the teams, but that's they're hey, imploding. That is bro. free agency grades, my friend. Listen. If you really want to have some fun, we can go through power rankings after free agency, although that it means nothing, and the Bills are leaps and bounds ahead of all of you. So let's not put too much weight on free agency. You know, it's, Wait, it's a little wild, too. Like, as a Patriots fan, I've been able to kind of sit back for a little bit and just kind of comprehend this offseason so far. And the Patriots are still one of the, the highest teams in terms of cap spending this offseason so far. And yet... All of all the all, all the Patriots fans, including me at first, were freaking out. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? But it's because of what the front office guys were saying. Gerard Mayo, Elliot Wolf, we're gonna we're gonna go out and weaponize the offense, and we're gonna go out and we're gonna burn some cash. They did. They just didn't necessarily bring in guys we haven't seen in the system before. And quite honestly, the Patriots are having a sneaky. A sneaky good offseason, but because it's not big free agent signings or guys that nobody's heard of yet, nobody wants to talk about it. Are, okay, you know what? Look, look at look at look at out of all the teams in the what AFC. What the heck have the Patriots done? Look at out of all of the teams in the AFC East, look at how many guys all of you have lost. Who did the Patriots lose? Who who did the Patriots lose that we sit back? Who did you gain? Say, oh, Oh no, we lost them. Oh, how are we gonna you lost who did you gain? Here, Mag Jones. Who did we lose? What did Mac you gain? Jones. What up? What up? Mac Jones. Mac you retain Jones. nonsense. You retain players that stink. Up, Who'd you gain? Oh, Mac, Mac Jones. Mac Jones. Mac Jones, who was a big reason why this team wasn't successful. As I think I'm frozen, but y'all can hear me. But that's all that matters. I've yet to hear who you gained. That's subtraction by addition. You've retained players who were part of a terrible team last year. So <laughs> tell me who you gained. Me. Hold up. Look at look at it like this, though. Look at it this like this. Because Richie, you are the negative Pats fans who are a, a the glass <laughs> half empty right now. That's exactly that. That's what you are. They brought back the players that, despite being a four-win team, are still good. Why were the Patriots bad last year? Bad quarterback play, bad coaching, and injuries. Injuries. Okay, Kendrick Bourne didn't play the majority of the season. Demario Douglas is, was in and out all year. Hunter Henry didn't play the end of the season. They're bringing back the guys that were actually good for their team last year and are signing them to contract extensions. Hunter Henry, the best free agent tight end on the market. Kendrick Bourne, after 
Mike Evans and T. Higgins and, and Pittman, all of those guys were tagged and re-signed with their respective teams. Kendrick Bourne was the second best wide receiver in free agency. What did they do? They brought him back. Anthony Jennings, who had the most run stops at or behind the line of scrimmage this past season. What did they do? They brought him back. They brought back all of their key players who actually served a purpose. And any guy that, that was a cancer to the team or didn't perform well last season, they didn't bring back. So as long as the Patriots can stay healthy, I'm not saying they're going to be uh, miles better than last year. But you know what? They brought back players who are top at their respective positions, especially in free agency this offseason. Brought back the guys who were top three at their, at their positions in free agency this year. How can you go wrong with that? They just brought in KJ Osborne, who is a very, very, very good number three option, who to me is one of the more underrated receivers in the league. But nobody wants to talk about KJ Osborne because you have Justin Jefferson and TJ Hawkinson and Jordan Addison. So nobody's going to talk about you know, wide receiver three to wide receiver four, the Patriots have had a sneaky good offseason and they're going to focus on the draft. I'm not saying that they're going to be a 10 win team, but you know what? The Patriots are in a three year rebuild. And first, I don't know, Colby. You take care of your players. I think you should take that back. You sold me. I got 10 wins now for the 10 Patriots. Win? Okay, look, hey, hey, hey. Wins. You got me. You know, I doubted oh, you wow. and then you went on the clock and you convinced me. I'm well, so I'm not convinced you, wins. but no, I'm <laughs> not saying 10, 10 wins. wins. Nah, you got me messed up. You think they win the 10 games. I'm taking the under on that one. Hey, but listen, what happened? What was the issue last year with the Patriots? Oh, did I hear the injuries? Oh, injuries sounds massive. familiar. On every side injuries. of the ball, Matthew, Matthew it Dugan, happened. Christian My point Wallace. is, it happens everywhere. So we were all in the same boat. The entire Buffalo Bills defense got killed last year. The <laughs> oh, yeah. Miami Dolphins <laughs> defensive good. line, first it was Jalen Phillips, then it was Bradley Chubb. The Jets had their own injuries as well. So let's just stop bringing up the injury thing regarding the New York Jets. Like, we're the only ones that have, have a risk of injuries, okay? We all have injury risk, every NFL team. Let me just say mm -hmm. that. All right, the listen, more you, the more you talk about us getting injured, the more you're manifesting your own team getting injured. How about that? Think about that. So we have to highlight a super chat from Scott Blakely real fast, Richie. <laughs> he just came in, and he is a now proud owner of some Mando products. Scott! Just an insight. Just, yeah. And the Mando promo code is cap sensitive. And one word, AFC is looking forward to trying. Wife of 43 years giggled and said, really? I said, I support great guys and always on call. For hey, I'm sending this to Scott. It's Bill's Mafia coming in strong, baby. I appreciate that. Thank you so Bill's much, Scott. Scott, thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. And if you guys want to support the brand here at Roundtable Sports, get your Mando starter pack today, baby. Like Scott yeah. did. And at least, and let me say this too. Um, it actually is a really good product. It is really a really good product, and it actually does work at the end of the day. Um, Sounds so great. if because there are people that do struggle with BO body odor for those who don't know, and um it definitely lasts a very, very, very long time. So check it out. And for 35 bucks for the whole starter kit is amazing. Yeah, I I got my starter pack. I got to go get it. I got to show it off like Dan is. And so but I've lathered up my boys at least four times on stream right I've now. I've honestly guys. never. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I've never used. um. I've never used. What's it called? The, the deodorant that it's like liquid. What are they called? What? Oh. It's cream. Cream. Yeah, like usually it's, it's deodorant a stick, cream. right? But they have like deodorant cream. I never used that, and it was pretty good. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate you. Nothing like a little feel-good moment, huh? Oh, baby. You know it. Time to set some shit straight tonight. J-E-T-S. Ooh, King Losey's coming. Uh oh Damn. T.D. Finstall's blood pressure raised by reading that, King Losey. <laughs> King Losey need to retire, bro. <laughs> he needs to retire. <laughs> it's so <laughs> awesome. I could sit back and just... He needs some pleasantries. That's what he needs. Some pleasantries. <laughs> he needs He's about to get it this year when we get to see the D uh, J E T. And he needs a fun-filled day of pleasantries. Uh, you know? Austin, I'm gonna buy Mando <laughs> some. some uh, I'm gonna buy Loski some Mando. Hey man, Austin. Um, Austin says, "Love you all on the AFC's roundtable, the best podcast in the world. You Let's guys go. have inspired me to make my own." Dan, we need nice. one more defensive tackle, then draft. Well, good luck. Austin. And so that's my boy, Austin. He was a caller today on my call-in show. I nice. appreciate you, Austin. you the man, Salute brother. You, I agree brother. with you. Thank you, Austin. And good good luck, luck on your uh, good journey, luck on man. Making your 
Yeah. Don't don't listen to the haters like Anthony is right now at me. Congratulations, Jets, for winning the, the offseason two years in a row. Hold on to the happiness. Your season will go up in flames as always. Hey, baby, that's two rings. That's twice someone, more than you'll ever have, get, baby. I mean, at least we get offseason rings. What rings do you have, Bill? Dan, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Anthony. What rings do you have, Anthony? Anthony, the have, Bill fan? We have three rings, the Jets. A real ring and two offseason rings. <laughs> three, baby. Wow. I'll take it. I mean, yeah, we can forget a division, though. You know? Oh, God, what is this? Oh. <laughs> Richie! Oh. oh. <laughs> and so that's what Rich is going to look like by the end of next season if they don't make the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't know if I'm going to be here next year if that happens. Oh, you man. You guys can find a new Jets guy, a new guy to rep roundtable. Richie, we might, I mean, Dan, we might well start looking now. Go ahead and find a <laughs> new Jets guy. Bro. Oh, man. Oh, oh, gosh. I can't handle all the heartbreak. Just, I can't. Hey, Unk. Thank you for hey, the dollars. So that's me. And so apparently I think that means you're old, you know. It's a compliment. Oh, old. You're not a day past when you're 29. Old. Thanks. If you're old, <laughs> you're like a day past 29. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Bro, you come on now. Everybody in the chat talk about OBJ to Miami, baby. It might happen. It might happen. It might happen, but this ain't 2016. This ain't 2016. No, 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 OBJ, no, no, no. bro. TD, TD, TD. was solid for Baltimore. Don't even get it twisted. If the Jets landed OBJ, you'd be saying he's washed. If any of us signed him, you'd be like, oh, he's a bum. He's a bum. No, 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 no. You're like, OBJ 2016. One handed catch no. is coming our way. I've been, I've been quiet all this time. I want to talk. Leave me alone. Let me talk. Let me talk. Okay. All Listen. right. The floor is yours. Everyone, Listen. watch out. There is no difference when I be comparing these moves to different teams. Okay. So if OBJ went to Buffalo, I'd applaud it because that's a nice weapon because you already got some. Okay. You got KK. You got Diggs. Adding OBJ. Nice. Okay. Before Mike Williams. Okay. If OBJ went to the Jets, I would have said, ah, eh, because you still need that number two guy. Anytime you could put OBJ as your number three, like, like he was somewhat in Baltimore, catch two, two passes a game, three passes a game, be a weapon in the playoffs, maybe make a big play or something like that. That's all you're looking for. We're not asking him to come in and be the Odell of, of, of the Giants and all of that. We just asked him to be number three in, in Tyreek and Waddle show. Oh, OBJ got a nice one here and there. And if Tyreek and Waddle goes out a game or two like they were dealing with last year, we got OBJ. Now we just need him to step up for a, a two or three games. So it's a heck of a move. Now, how much we pay for him, <laughs> it will determine how, if, how good or bad the move is. So if you're paying a lot of money and you bring him in, I don't like it. But what's the update little, though? What's the report? Is he coming on a visit? Like where's he coming from? No, the Dolphins. Yeah, the Dolphins have been looking into it. You know, um, and y'all oh, stop that Miami people. got twenty million. Y'all don't understand salary right. cap. Y'all slow down, okay? They don't have the money that you think they have. Okay, they got to save up for the draft picks. They got to keep some money for that. And some of these players that they already signed, they have not submitted to the league the structure or the contact to know what the hits are going to be for each year. So. Wait, wait until that stuff is finalized because y'all the same people that said, Oh, we got 60 million next year and 11 draft picks. But today is a little over 30 million because those contracts are starting to come in and that future money is starting to add up. So, um, but I, I love the move if we can get them for a, a, a fair deal. Overpay, I don't like it. You know, uh, hey, underpay, I love it. So it's on OBJ where he want to go. But He's yeah, wide receiver still, four. He ain't wide receiver three. three. You got three. Braxton three. Burials. You oh, got Braxton dog, Burials, stop, baby. Stop, Braxton stop. Burials, wide receiver you three. You, you wish you even had a Braxton Burials. I don't even know a receiver on y'all. I'm good. I got a. I got a pop <laughs> Douglas, <laughs> baby. I got a pop Douglas. Let's keep in mind, you picked Who up is that? Brad. You Who picked up our trash. In fact, hold up, hold up. You didn't even pick up our trash. <laughs> Did he just Jets. name my Jets uncle? Jets cousin? picked up our trash, and <laughs> then you picked up the Jets trash. Hold on, no, 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 Kobe. You ain't gonna say that and just walk past it. Who is Pop Douglas? You don't know Pop Demario Douglas? 
my cousin uncle or something? I don't know. I haven't even heard of hold that up, Hold up, hold up. You don't know Demario Douglas. Are you, pop, were you watching Patriots games last year? He and I didn't know. He put up over 500 yards as a rookie oh, six-round pick for New England oh, last year with bad quarterback he play. Was the only receiver Bro, he had he put up 500 yards. yards. What you mean? Pop, pop, they're like I'm supposed to know who that is. Are you kidding me? Yeah, he's supposed <laughs> to know who that is, TD. Kobe, he was Kobe, cooking Kobe, y'all. What you mean? Kobe, Kobe was, he, was he undrafted, Kobe? No, I, I just told you it was a six-round pick. Might as well have been. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, but Kobe. <laughs> It's a shame that you got to throw out a six-round pick with 500 yards to me, Kobe. We got popped up. Are you kidding me, Kobe? You just set y'all back Pop three Douglas, years. Pop, Pop, Pop Douglas doing more than Braxton Berrios is doing for your team. Oh, he, he, he did, he's going to do more for the Patriots than Odell. Old-ass oh. Beckham Jr. is going to do for your team who's going to, what, play six games and put up 300 yards? Kobe. Yeah, that, that's Kobe. reality. This man said Pop Douglas put up 700 yards this season. You're going to be like, oh, Douglas. Oh, okay. I know who that is now. You know what I'm talking about? He said when he puts up 700 yards this year. (laughs) He's wide receiver three. He's wide receiver three. He's having a 1,000 yards as wide receiver three. Who's one and two? One and two for what? For the Patriots. What do you mean who's one and two? Oh, one and two for like the wide receivers? Yeah, well, you got Kendrick Bourne. Kendrick Bourne is uh, going to be your wide receiver uh, too, and then you got KJ Osborne as wide receiver four, and then you got T Higgins. You got T Higgins coming in, being wide receiver one, who's going to fry up some sushi next season. Uh, the Miami it. Dolphins are going to chop down it. the stretch for another I, season. Bro, I get it. I get it now. now. You're hoping on T. Higgins. Okay, all right. I'm going to leave it at that. You I'm just not hoping. I'm putting it out there. You me and Richie, the Patriots, me and Richie were talking about uh, manifesting. So I, it's going to happen. I'm not even saying maybe. Like, no, it's happening. T. Higgins, uh, wait for it. Wait bro, for you it. might have the worst receiving core in the whole NFL. <laughs> we might. <laughs> I ain't going to put it past <laughs> us, but. <laughs> Man, oh, shit, y'all. y'all. We might get a first for, for Bryce and Barry see y'all. The way, the way things going, that's just, man. I feel bad for you, Kobe. Man, get your quarterback and have some hope. I'll just leave hey, it at that. Don't don't so, forget. Don't don't forget who drafted Braxton Berrios. So a little off topic. You don't see, that he was an All Pro. Braxton Berrios was on the Jets. as a return man. As a, we got oh, we got two of those already. So a little off topic, but y'all see that the Chiefs and like the city of Kansas City are like in like a battle as far as their stadium. And the Chiefs I did see that they they might not be the Kansas City. That Chiefs they might anymore. leave Kansas City. Yeah, they might be like the the Buffalo Chiefs. How is that <laughs> the Buffalo Chiefs have two teams of Buffalo? How is it two oh, it's a very back-to-back popular. Super Bowl? I don't know any of this. I'm just hearing it, but like I'm just thinking it, it, it from like that's literally the best team in football, and that's an issue. I will say this. <laughs> I mean, yeah, dude. I, I will say this. Um Chiefs better hold their ground. The Chiefs yeah. better hold their ground. And let me tell you, usually I'm um, like Miami, our our state said no. And our owner said, all right, I'll give the 800 million to do all the renovations, add all the stuff. Our owner paid almost $800 million to renovate and upgrade the stadium and all of that. But the Chiefs, hold your ground. You just brought two Super Bowls to that city. Do you know the revenue that the Great. Kansas City Chiefs brings to the, the city? So in the state, so at the end of the day, y'all have a right. Dolphins ain't won nothing, okay? They just bringing a little money to Miami Gardens, the surrounding area. But the Chiefs, man, they better hold a ground. And, 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 hey, City, if you want us here, because if not, I would move. It is what it is, and I'll move somewhere close, right on the border of another state, right on the outside. Hey, so I'll tell you what, listen, they are so close to St. Louis, and the people of St. Louis want a football team again. Mm. I can tell you that. Worked out great for them last time. You think that's yeah. what's that's the uh, that's the option? They're gonna, uh, they're well, gonna pay for it, bro. St. Louis, they Chiefs. will. Ugh. They can't that Louis. sounds so wrong. I feel like that can't. I feel like that can't happen just because they're the the ramps in my. You got to rebrand everything too if that happens. Money though, money, money that's gonna cost, cost, bro. That's that's gonna cost Ooh. a crap ton. And you know what? 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 If they do that, too. the bills almost a- moved. Remember? It would be an easy transition for Kansas City, though, because it ain't like one of the major, major cities, though. No, it's a small city. It's yeah, not it's city. not. So it wouldn't be that be- big of a of a move like like they're hurting. Like, they are the economy. Uh, uh-huh. potential. So, uh, man, they need to cough it up. 
but do they even have the money to cough it up? From what I understand, there's uh, not like a lot of people who like the owner of the Chiefs, surprisingly enough. Apparently, he's super cheap. That. Well, nothing so the Chiefs always that. finish like dead last, and like as far as like their like uh, stadium updates, how they treat players, how they treat like families and stuff. So I don't know. And, and winning Super Bowls, and and winning Super Bowls, <laughs> and winning Super Bowls. You know what I mean? Hey, it's okay if some of your locker mates are some rats, you know, scurrying around. It is what it is. Don't matter, baby. We're here to win Super Bowls. That's it. It's iron sharpens iron, right? That's interesting, though. I didn't yeah. know they were going through that. No. Absolutely. That is interesting. All right. Richie Fresh with another super chat. Richie, when the Jets get a playoff spot, just take it all in. From me, and I'm sure Dan, too, was tearing up when we broke our 17 drought. Love you, boys. Dude, dude. You see this? You, you see this? Dude. Is this so hard? Yo, listen, you have no idea, man. What a, soon as, what a nice. As soon as when we made the playoffs, as soon as when we made the playoffs, man, like, bro. Like from that 17 year drought, I could like I didn't care if we won. Because of all the pain that I went through as a child, just seeing my team play meaningful football for the first time in my life, oh dude, hell yeah, I fucking teared up. And that was the well, last time you, you saw it. Thank you, Richie Fresh, for reminding, you know, me where you guys came from. And it's just like there's no sympathy with you guys. You guys don't want your boy Richie to experience something that he hasn't experienced in 13 years. And so as long oh. as it's the wild card. So. I just want to get to the dance, bro. That's all I want to do, man. And people get upset with me because I get overexcited. Like, listen, I think the, I, I have to get diagnosed with something. Overly passionate syndrome or something. I don't know. Like, I, I, I get way too excited. <laughs> like, I, I'm dancing and screaming my ass off that we signed Mike Williams. I don't know why. And. And this is my biggest pet peeve. When people try to tell me and Jets fans how to fan, and I shouldn't be as excited as I am. So let me just put <laughs> things in perspective. And this isn't a shot at UTD, even though you said that today. It's just in general. Trash. This may, like, the way I look at it as my fan, and this isn't for Jets fans. This is just me as an individual, Richie, myself. This is how I approach life as a sports fan. And it's sad. <laughs> but I don't get a lot of excitement in the season. That's correct. I have not. So why can't I celebrate a win in the offseason of getting a player that I wanted them to sign? Why can't I over-celebrate? Like, I'm allowed to, and I will continue to. And if you don't like that about me, that's, that's your problem because I will continue to do it. And that's what Jets Media stands for. It's where a spot where Jets fans can be overly excited. Do I go over the top? Absolutely. But I don't care. Like, if I cared, I would not do it. I get comments all the time. Who's this idiot? It's like, screaming like the Jets won the Super Bowl. You signed Mike Williams, not Calvin Jackson is prime. I'm like, yeah, I know that, but I'm still going to be overly excited because I love this team that much. And a thing, and a player that I wanted them to sign, they signed, I go crazy. Same thing when we got Aaron Rodgers last year. I went crazy. And hopefully, I can get that same excitement when it matters the most, which is actually winning football games. So, Richie Fresh... Respect to you, my friend. I hope the world is your message. That's been my life as a Jets fan, TD. Good freaking call, man. You, you're really... I don't know if it was a good idea for me to recommend you getting that soundboard now that I think about it. <laughs> Listen, ladies and gentlemen, screw what Richie just said. I'm going to tell you how to fan. Jets fans, give up. Give up now. You have no hope. <laughs> We in seven games. It's going to be hilarious. And everybody stay healthy. And everybody stay healthy. We all win seven games. I am going to laugh like never before. I can't wait. Dolphin fans stand up. Bills fans, Patriots fans, we can all laugh together. This is the one time we can come together. The Jets are winning seven games with a healthy team. Get ready, Richie. Get ready. Mm. Just keep it. the hate coming, Chad. I see you guys. So I'm defending you in the draft. You the boy. that? Richie it sucks your boy. mother's milkers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone said Richie sucks, and I said Richie sucks your mother's milkers, bro. <laughs> yeah, Richie! Milkers. What do you got to say about that, bro? That's a dub. Dub in the chat, baby. <laughs> he got it from Jack Wilson. He got it from Jack Wilson. Hey, bro, I'm used to the hate. It's all it builds character. Where would I be without hate, bro? Dude, listen, man, honestly. And for anyone that ever wants to start, like, a YouTube channel or, like, be a content creator, if, like, Say say you don't have haters, like bro, like and so you're not doing something right. 
Yeah. Even when you think it's impossible, because I thought it was impossible for Richie to have haters, but he does. Kobe, you got haters, bro? Bro, every single time I go on Bleacher Report, I stopped looking (laughs) after they post it afterwards. They post like your (laughs) clips on Bleacher Report afterwards. I I stopped looking looking at what people said because I got really (laughs) depressed. (laughs) Dude. (laughs) Same, bro. Listen, I was like, I am not shit. I fucking suck. I was like, I'm done with this. This is not my career. I'm gonna be nothing. Like, I let that shit get to me. Hey, bro, I ain't gonna lie. But, but the good thing is the Bleacher Report. Um, oh, you know, they know they know when they have good people and they don't work. They don't care about that stuff because my comments were, oh, Bleacher Report must be going downhill to get this guy. Oh my gosh, this guy again. I'm I'm taking this app away. These people, man, boy, there are people that grow real hate for you out here. Yeah. It's real. Like, like they do not like your success or the more they see you, which means you're doing more and more. They don't like those type of things, man. So at the end of the day, if you are an individual trying to be a content creator or something, you cannot worry about what other people have to say about you because I've learned it is none of my business what other people <laughs> think about me. It is none of my business. It, it, it Not one iota of my business what anybody thinks about me. I may read it, but when I read it and it's negative, oh, my bad, it ain't any of my business. Let me get out of that, Okay. If it's positive, oh, it ain't my business, but I appreciate it. That's just, you got to have a strong mentality. And I can tell you all four of us guys do because we're still pushing along. And look somebody at that, Colby. Said, <laughs> somebody scheduled said, like, Bleach Report shows this month. And so I'm not even mad at this one comment. <laughs> one came in. And so I'm not even mad at this one comment. Someone just said, Dan is like Sydney Sweeney. And so you want to fuck him, but he's a mid analyst. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, all right. Well, hey, all right. Bro. <laughs> did somebody just say that they like like low key just want to do you is like I oh think so. My. That's what I got from yeah. that. Just Gotta purchase the man no starter pack, baby. What you get? The ball deodorant? First of all, shout out to Ashel. You guys see that profile picture? That's Richie. Richie, look at Richie. Yeah, that's yeah, me. Yeah, that's pretty dope. That's me, I King did, Jamie that- the Mad. That's King Jamie. You know, you guys know King Jamie. Was that at the event? That was at my event. You got that got was it, a Jets Media it. Day, and he's wearing a got Josh it. Allen's trash shirt. This is one of our biggest. Nice. This is one of our biggest uh, followers. Thank That's you so much, love. Astro. Thank you. I'm brother. pretty you sure. Correct me if I'm wrong, Astro, that. but I think he is the number I have. I got a text from someone, and I think this is him. He said, "Yo, start up the stream, mad late." <laughs> 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 I think this is. I think this is. Yeah, I think it's the same guy. Appreciate you, bro. I That's appreciate up, you big bro. time, man. This is this is a uh, Louie, bro. Louie is a loyal, loyal, loyal subscriber of Roundtable Sports. Appreciate you. Thank you, man. Javon says, "One love to you guys. Keep doing your thing." Am I supposed to hear something right now? Yeah, Richie, you you, yeah, you kept playing the soundboard, but it's mid. Richie just started dancing for no reason. I enjoy you it. Guys, you guys don't hear anything? I hear it now. I hear your intro. What about now? I hear nothing. It's like it's like muffled. It's the JTS thing, but it's bad, Richie. It's an indication of how your season is gonna go when you push the button. You hear that? <laughs> no, Richie. You guys hear the applause clear? I don't. It's StreamYards then. I told yeah, you weird. we had problems on StreamYards. Damn it, bro. Well. It's okay. You guys can hear this though. Yeah, we hear that one. Mm. Now we don't. Cut out. Yeah, when the beat come in, I think you got to turn the volume down on it for it to come through. Decimals yeah, we are too high. Dress. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we should just start bumping the LaSalle beat, bro. That's LaSalle. I mean. Well, I do Kobe, want... Kobe, you ever been in on a freestyle session? He was last I last think time I have. I, don't, I do I want to show have. you guys some odds, though, presented by our proud sportsbook sponsor, BetUS Sportsbook, baby, because Please. I think it's pretty interesting of what the AFC East odds are at. 
because I'm waiting for mm. them to change. They haven't changed yet. With all the moves the Jets are making, they still got the Jets where they're at. And I respect it, Bet US. But Jets fans, I'm telling you guys. That's right. Now. That's right. It's they all wrong, man. Get your Listen. bets. The it's only one wrong wild. The only one wrong the only the US wrong knows here is Buffalo. Hey, man. Well, they got the Jets at plus 285 to win the AFC East. The Bills are the favorites at plus 130. The Dolphins are at plus 180. If you guys want to do us a favor, click that link at the bottom of the description. Open up your account. I mean, if you did not open your account yet with BetUS, what are you waiting for? This is a great way to help your boys out at Roundtable Sports. They got a lot of fun things. And, Dan, I heard that uh, March Madness is a thing on here as well. Yes, they got the is, my friend. Let me tell you what, okay? I trusted my chat yesterday to put together a parlay for a couple of those teams, right, for each and every single individual game. And it seems like somebody convinced me to put down 200 on Purdue winning the entire thing. So Ooh. hopefully that's not money flushed down the toilet because I know nothing about college basketball, folks. However, listen, we talk about ball all the time, folks, but BetUS has each and every single sport that you could think of and what not better of a time than to do it for March Madness. I mean, this promo, right? Three initial deposits, 125%. And if you bet, you get 10% gambler's insurance too, folks. So no harm, no foul. It's a beautiful thing. We highly recommend it. If you know anything about college basketball, bet US is the place to do it. Yeah, they got the Super Did Bowl. Did you do the odds. bracket? Did no, you guys dude. do the bracket? Dude, honestly, man, like I was just on it yesterday on my stream. And so I went through like a few games. I picked Wagner. And uh, who else did I pick? I think I picked Tennessee as well to win a game. Mm. So, I mean, yeah. Like I said, I was just, I don't know. I was just trying to. Just rely on the chat. And that's it. Wow. Yeah, I did mine. Um, they if if you haven't, if you still have time, go do the bracket too. They have the bracket challenge on Bet US. It's really on Bet US to have them? Yes, man. I I feel I did mine yesterday. I filled it out. Chance to win some big money on it. Oh, I didn't know that at all. Yeah. And you if you guys want to. If you guys want to win a lot of money, though, they have a, a prop bet on BetUS of NBA championship winner. What state? New York, baby. Let's go to New York. <laughs> what a weird bet. But it's going to be the Knicks, baby. You know it's not going to be anywhere else because the Knicks are taking it all, baby. We're winning it all. Guys, don't forget, hit that uh, link. Go, open please. up your account. $100 will get you $225 to play with. Free money on BetUS. Please, please, please. Bet responsibly. Bet US, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. Colby, you a Celtics fan? Yes, sir. I don't follow basketball like the way I follow football, but I follow it enough to know that best team in the NBA. Ugh. We'll see Go you in the Eastern Conference I'm a casual in NBA, bro. Not Richie. Knicks yeah. ain't going to no yeah. final, the Eastern Conference finals. See, let me hey. stop. Let me stop. What? No, tell me why. Tell me why they're not, Mr. I know NBA. You want to talk ball? Talk ball. Repping the Knicks is worse than repping the Jets. Okay. Damn. Do you follow? Have you been watching anything around like the storylines of the NBA or are you just speaking sh pure hate nonsense? That's yeah. My, my, favorite, my favorite team is the best team in the NBA. Thank you, Kobe. So I will tell you what, folks, 420. You obviously don't watch the NBA. Then. So 416 of you currently on YouTube, 418, excuse me. Listen, we are always so humbled, but just to see how many returning viewers we see and new people as well. Please do us a favor, smash that like button. Uh, we're only at 189 and subscribe to the channel as well. If you're currently watching and have not subscribed, we're certainly close do to, that. Uh, what are we 14K. Close to? 14K, bro. We're close to 14K on this channel. I think okay. we can get to it. I think we can get to it. You think so, Dan? That's a that's a big one. How I many? Think, how how long have we done the channel now? It's about two we're going years. Into right three, now. We're going into the third season. So and normally, like, like during our analytics, right? So two normally, years right during, complete in August, right? Yeah. So normally, right during our analytics, I check per episode, and based off of views, it's fifty percent subscribed and fifty percent not subscribed who mm. tune in. Damn. So I can almost tell you there's probably, if I had to guess, a hundred of you that are watching that 
and you don't see that button highlighted as subscribed, certainly knock that out. So, so Dan, what I'm hearing is that there's no excuse for us to not reach 14K by the end of the stream. Is that what you're telling Precisely. Me? Precisely. Precisely. Okay. Precisely. Precisely. Yes. I mean, that would be sick, but do we have that much loyal fans? And so I get naked. Ooh. All right, guys, don't subscribe. Subscriber counts to start dropping. Let's go slow. Let's go slow. Let's not do it, please. And he's serious, probably, too. <laughs> well, honestly, the good news is oh, Dan is sober with us. So if he said that last week, I'd be a little more concerned. Yeah. Yes. Actually, you're one, you're one, actually, week, baby. one week chip. We actually <laughs> just got to 13,912. So we actually already. 12. Yeah, so that's uh, we're eighty eight away. It's pretty dope. Mm. Well, there is a dolphin fan that says we don't claim TD. Why not? Oh, who is we? Why do people? Yeah, who is we talking about? <laughs> we don't claim. Oh TD. man, I like TD, man. I, I also, like I also love. Nah, I brought up the Knicks. He's a Heat fan. That was a Heat fan too, though. <laughs> yeah, I brought up the Knicks, and now Miami Heat fans are out there because the Heat and the Knicks have a deep rivalry. Deep rivalry. Yeah, deep, yeah, but deep. the Heat own y'all. They Now, back in the day, y'all own the Heat. I was about the to Heat say, own y'all now. I mean, okay, congrats. You beat us in the playoffs last year. Congratulations. Yeah, get used which, to it. Which is why, by the way, I said Eastern Conference Finals. I think that's a realistic goal for the Knicks, though. For being just, Let me just talk ball for a sec. Against who? The Celtics. Yeah, but y'all ain't going to get past the Heat. The Heat are done this year, bro. You see what they're doing? Come on now. Uh, y'all say that every year, and they end up beating the Boston in. This is the so year the, Knick the Knicks went to the playoffs two years ago to get the monkey off their back. They lost in the first round. They went to the playoffs last year. They finally won a playoff series, got into the second round. They lost. Next step of the evolution is get to the Eastern Conference Finals. We'll lose to the Celtics this year. Next year, we go to the damn thing after we get another superstar. You're gonna make me root for the for the heat this year, man. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. No, in all seriousness, the Heat are a team that scares me. I do not want to see them in the playoffs. <laughs> Ever. They play tough. Hit 14K, Dan, wearing nothing but chick wing necklace. Yeah. Yeah, where, where's the necklace, Dan? Oh, dude. Oh, dude. So, you want the necklace? So everybody can laugh at, at this ridiculousness. I've never seen this in my life. Earlier when he put it on, I'm like, what is wrong with that? You got that from Sheen, one, didn't you? You got that from Sheen, didn't you? I'm telling That's you straight a different up. This one. This from Sheen. He had That's a he had a um a wing, wing earlier. Dude. And so I got the wing as well. And so I got the wing as well. He went Sheen shopping. That's wild. <laughs> what kind of so does Sheen sell this? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no. This is actually a shout out to a locally based company in Buffalo, New York called the Lucky Wing. It's very popular. Say, for example, you walk down in the middle of a damn tailgate in Buffalo, New York, you'll probably see several of these, bro. Like, I got a collection. Dude. I got a collection of these bad boys. You could have got it for like three bucks. You talking about like a panty dropper, bro? Dude, just rock this at the club. Real Who is shit. that? My Matt? Is that you, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, man. man. Dan, the chat say you like drumsticks, man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't deal with y'all, man. Dude. Uh, hey, man. man. And so do us a favor and make TD next. I love it. What do you mean? <laughs> Dude, he made me like 300 pounds, bro. <laughs> oh, and with the shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> with the double chin. <laughs> Yo, make TD next, please. <sighs> Thank you. And finally, make Colby. As well, because we haven't Make seen a Colby, Colby. <laughs> and so we haven't seen a Colby image yet either. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> Neil, everybody's looking at it like, who's gonna read? Yeah, it? who's gonna read it? I got it. I got it. <laughs> Neil with the five dollars. What are your likes, dislikes, and wants for each respective team in free agency? Hope all, all you guys are doing well. I appreciate what you guys do. PG, my guy. There we go. This Neil is for, Ray, this is what's for going Colby. on, my brother? How are you? Well, thank Yo, you for the man, super chat. Man, dude. This is actually um, getting us back on on track of talking ball. Uh, so, 
starting off with the Bills, since I feel like we really haven't spoken much about them on this episode, but I'm yeah, fine with I that am. because as predicted, it was going to be a pretty lackluster free agency just due to financial situations. Love the Curtis Samuel move. Certainly do. I think he's an upgrade from Gabe Davis. Love his route running capabilities. I still think we need to address wide receiver in the draft, but I do think it is an upgrade from what we currently had. Dislikes, dude. I was live on the huddle today on BetUS TV when I saw that we ended up getting Mike Edwards. And I'm sure Richie and TD can attest to this, that I had a pretty uh, <laughs> emotional reaction of how unhappy I was. Yeah, that the show's up. canceled now. <laughs> it's canceled now because of me. No, 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 I'm just kidding. It's not. I hope not. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, I really wanted Blackman a lot, dude. He was a stud safety out of the Colts, but we ended up getting a safety who's serviceable. He's going to be a bit of a downgrade from Micah Hyde, uh, but I still think that we'll probably try and address that in free agency as well. And then once, bro, I mean, at the end of the day, just give me a wide receiver, solid defensive tackle, solid safety, some tackle depth, and I'm good for the draft, and I'm still just as confident. How about you, TD? Um, I like that we've geared up to win the division. I dislike, you know, losing some of the players we lost because, you know, you get used to players. And what do I want? I want OBJ at the right price. You know, it's Super Bowl time. It's that simple. Thanks, Neil. How about you? Wow. Colby? That was that was sweet, simple, and to the point, to be confident. All right. Super, Super Bowl teams do. Neil, buddy. Neil, buddy. I know we got to go live on the channel. We got we to gotta talk. I feel like it's been a minute since I went live on my channel, so we're going we're gonna to do that soon. But. What do I like about what the Patriots have done is they prioritize bringing their own guys back. I think under Belichick, that was one of the many things that rubbed people the wrong way was it doesn't matter how well you played is if Belichick didn't view you at a certain level and you didn't give a discount to the team, you weren't coming back. The Patriots are now showing players that if you perform well, that we are going to take care of you and we are going to bring you back. And that's exactly what they did here. Not only are they bringing back good players, they're they're setting themselves up for the future on the field, but they're also kind of setting an atmosphere off the field and trying to make this a place that people are going to want to play at again and, and making this a, a good environment to, to be at. And I think that's really, really important. Uh, so I really like that they're bringing those guys back. I like that they're upgrading where they need to, but dislike... Obviously, they didn't necessarily hit where I think they should have, right? I think they should have been a little bit more aggressive at left tackle. I think uh, they should have been a little bit more aggressive, maybe in the trade market and trying to get a wide receiver. Look, to me, I understand maybe not wanting to give up a fourth for Keenan Allen. I think it was very do doable, especially for a one-year deal, a guy who had put up over 1,000 yards just a year ago, put up over 100 catches just a year ago. I would have been fine giving up a fourth-round pick. I didn't love that they didn't go after that, but whatever they decided not to. To me, what upsets me more is that you could have given up what was like a fifth and a sixth-round pick for Jerry Judy. He might not be a proven wide receiver of one yet, but he's a wide receiver too that has the ability to be a wide receiver one, and he's going to be better than any guy you're likely going to get in rounds five and six. So why not take a chance on that guy in Jerry Judy, especially when you need help at wide receiver, big body guy on the outside who can play in the slot versatile helps you in all three phases. I was upset that they didn't take a chance on him again, looking at the needs that they had, but Neil buddy, I appreciate you for popping out on the AFC East round table, man. I really, really, really do. Let's go, Neil. I have to say mine, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't, it doesn't matter what your team. <laughs> what do you mean? Nothing. You didn't get it, Rich. It's okay. All right, let's hear it, Rich. <laughs> Tyron Smith, baby. Give me my left tackle. That's my like. You got Aaron Rodgers' protector. Give me the blind side, baby. Dislikes. Hmm. Lakey Fatu? I don't really hate mm. it, though. We need a defensive tackle. I mean, realistically, there's not a move the Jets made on in free agency where I'm like, I don't like that. Like, we've literally plugged in all the holes we needed to do. Okay, I'll say this. Not bringing back Bryce Huff. There we go. That's a dislike. Ooh, yeah. Um, that's not someone we brought in. That's someone we let walk. So that's my dislike. And wants, um, I would love Jadavian Clowney to replace Bryce Huff. <laughs> so that's mine. And, um, yeah, we appreciate the support, Neil. Thank you so much for the super chat. Austin with this $2. TD, how is Allen a bum, but your team can't beat him? Yeah, okay, let me take 30 seconds to make this clear. Jets fans, Patriots fans, Bills fans, listen. Listen to me clearly, okay? Josh Allen 
is a bum because our team can't beat him. I'm a Josh Allen hater. Certified. I don't like the man because he beats us. Okay? Now, I've given him his props, but don't expect me to always do that because I don't like him. He he makes me sick. I can't stand Josh Allen. Okay? Let's be clear. So when I troll, I'm trolling because I don't like him because I'm a Dolphins fan. All right? Let's be clear. Jets, I love what you're doing right now. You're building a winner. But because of that, I hate you. Okay? So I'm going to talk trash about them. I'm going to diminish everything you do because I am a Dolphins fan. And I don't like to see success of the teams in this division. So therefore, we're going to win the division. We're going to take over the division. And I'm going to believe it and I'm going to will it until it happens. But we were close. We were closer than we ever been in this year. This time is the year. And it's different. You know why? Because we were closer and we're getting closer. Now we were right there. We were right there. And we're finally going to jump the gate. It's happening this year. It's happening. Okay. Yeah. yeah Hopefully adjust, that your seat. adjust your seat. Whatever. Y'all, y'all gonna see. Adjust your seat. Thank you, GD. That was great. Professionally certified hater. Pretend you're all Jets fans. Ooh, ooh. how's it feel? Ooh. I'd rather not. I'm sick already. <laughs> you're disappointed. You fix your offensive line on paper. You've got your number two receiver. What are you doing at pick number ten? Uh, I feel like we talked about this earlier at the stop at the top of the show. Because it's a it's a really interesting debate. Because mm. I feel like the Jets are now one of those teams that every NFL fan is curious what they're going to do. Because you can argue so many different ways. You can argue this being better, but also this is better. Like TD, if you're the, if you're a fan of this team, what would you want the Jets to do? At number ten, I'm going to get the best receiver available. Does that um, include Brock Bowers because he's a receiver. Like yeah, he's but. Receiving- I, I, Piece it, or it, no, because you might have a receiver on the board better than him. He's just the best tight end available. Does that make sense? But so, if the top three receivers are gone, yeah, I don't if think they're he's gone, better than Brian Thomas. If, if they're gone, then I would consider Brock, Brock Bowers. But I'm bringing in a guy who I can view as the number two, so that I can push Mike Williams to number three. And yeah. that way, I feel good about the receiving core, just as good as any other team. And then if you do get an injury at the receiver spot, it's okay. If it's Mike Williams, he was number three anyway. If it's number two, then now Mike Williams moves up. If it's number one, you still got two and three. But you got to have that insurance. The Jets have filled the holes. Now it's time to think about depth. And if injuries do happen, did you build your team to sustain them, to be able to work through them? That's what a lot of teams don't do when they're in the position that the Jets are in now. But lucky for the Jets, they filled the holes and still got a whole draft. So now they could bring in a bunch of young players to sit behind the veterans, except your first rounder, and be depth. And be depth. So... They're perfectly set up right now. But, you know, I would go receiver because injuries do happen and you don't want to be up a creek and you lose one of your receivers and you only got the two that you have now. You don't want that to happen. You don't want Garrett Wilson to go down and then Mike Williams is all you got. You don't want Mike Williams to go down and you're back to just having Garrett Wilson and Lazard and things like that. Get that other receiver and feel good about the position, even if somebody goes down. That's where I'm at with it. That's the priority. Interesting. Um, <clears throat> short answer, I would say if Odunze is there, I grab Odunze. If he is not there, then I would go with Brock Bowers. As much as I love Brian Thomas Jr., I think that at 10, that would be a bit of a reach. I do think that Brock Bowers is a bit better of a pass catcher, and I do think that he'd be able to – and so I do feel like that he would start over Conklin. Um, yeah, that's what I would go. Yeah. And so if Odunze is there, grab him. If not, then Brock Bowers. Interesting stuff. Colby. Interesting, interesting. So what, you guys don't have, what would you say, a second round pick? Is that what you said, Richie? No, it's the 10th yeah, overall, he said. It's the 10th so wait, overall. But like, do, you guys, do you guys have a second round pick? No, that no. was what we gave up for Aaron Rodgers. So, okay. So what I'm doing here, 
is let's say that your offensive line is perfect. Let's say that Tyron Smith stays healthy. This is a perfect world. You're good for a year, whatever. Okay, you don't want to mess with the offensive line. I understand that. This is a really, really good wide receiver class, okay? You're going to have guys that are going to end up being true wide receiver ones that are going to be taken in the second and the third round. Like, that's how deep this is. There's going to be guys taken in the second round that realistically in any other draft would be first round selections. There's only so many picks. There's so many team needs. Guys are just naturally not all going to be able to be taken in the first round. That's just how it goes, supply and demand. So with that being said, I'm not taking a wide receiver where I'm at. Trade down. Trade down, okay? Because for where you're at, you're going to get, I don't want to say a haul, but you're going to get decent compensation. Only even, even if you only trade down a few spots, you could probably trade down from... 10 to 13, 10 to 15, and still be able to get a second round pick and potentially more. Now you have yourself stocked up heading into day two. Then day two, you can go ahead and you can get your offensive tackle. Day two, you can go ahead and get a, a wide receiver three who might just be a wide receiver three next year, but has that potential to climb his way up to being a wide receiver two, to being a wide receiver one. So that's what I really like for the Jets. Trade down and then make a selection in probably that 15 range. You could still go with a wide receiver if you want to there, or maybe you decide to go a defensive player or whatnot. What I actually like for the Jets, too, is, is maybe uh, you go tight end in the second round, right? Maybe you have to trade up, but maybe you go tight end in the second, and that's where you get your guy. And then maybe with the, the pick that you traded down in the first round, maybe you go offensive tackle still. Maybe you still go wide receiver. That way, you've got your guy who's a developmental piece in the second round at tight end, but you still got a game changer at offensive tackle or wide receiver in the first round just, just by trading down. So I like that option for them. Yeah, yeah trading with, down is definitely high on my list. Where you yeah, I'm with Kobe on that too. The trade down is is, is uh, it might actually be the most appealing route for you guys to go like, um, and I'm not even talking about three spots down. I would even consider early 20s, you know, 20, 21, 22, somewhere in that area. And, so get, a second, right? and get a better second, you know, a yeah. better second. Um. <laughs> You're going to get more I, I, than a second then, too. You're going to get, like, you're yeah. going to get a haul. You yeah, could get a, then, a potential first round is, pick. We need blue chip pieces now. That's the only thing I don't like. Dropping all well, the well, and missing out. This, tight end, the, this whole tight end narrative, let's be honest, even though it would be beautiful, it will be sexy, it's not a priority, though. It's not. You know, it's just a sexy thing, getting that tight end, the best one, and now you got a good one as a backup who's already there, you know? So... It's not a must, but it's, yeah, it's like now that Colby just said that as well, this draft class is so deep in tackles and then also in receivers and playmakers. So if you're able to trade down into the late twenties for a team that's desperate to grab somebody, and then maybe they throw a second in there. So you get back in the second round, that could also be a possibility. Mm. Well, we have a long way to go. Breaking news. Out. Odell, Odell meeting with the Dolphins tomorrow. Super Bowl. Super Bowl, man. Don't get nervous, Richie. I see you don't get nervous. I think it would be a good move for the Miami Dolphins. That's right. What I was actually do? one of the people that wouldn't, like, when OBJ got brought up to the Jets, everyone hated on me. Richie, we're not getting OBJ. Why? <laughs> no, I don't want him. I was like, I'll take OBJ for, like, wide receiver three or four. I mean, he made some plays. I don't get it. He did. And you know what you're getting from him. You're not asking him to be your number one or number two. You got Waddle. Exactly. You got Tyreek Hill. He's he's he'd be out there. I mean, the Miami Dolphins are win now mode. That's a win now move. I think that would be a solid move for the Dolphins, honestly. That's right, Dan. You're ready. And you want to read the next super chat? James uh, Payne is coming in saying. So a very close friend of mine is declining season tickets in Buffalo in the new stadium. Is PSL is. Uh, $3,500 plus season ticket costs. Reason there is only 62,000 seats. I've heard that quite a bit. I've heard that quite a bit. What um, is a PSL? It's basically a fee, like when a state agrees to also go on ahead and invest in a new stadium. So like these players need to, well, like, I mean, like these fans need to go on ahead and pay a one-time fee for seats for that new stadium. And then afterwards, it's just regular prices down the years by itself. But uh, yeah, dude, it's 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 pricey. Mm. Thirty five hundo, man. Nope. Why don't you mm. read this one, TD? TD, stop lying to these people. Hennessy, <laughs> the homie. 
You scared. We already heard you on your channel. Miami fans looking for more bad teams to play in 2024. Well, we already know two bad teams we play in 2024, the Jets and the Jets. The Jets yeah. <laughs> That's right. So we got we got two wins right there, you know, see? <laughs> we, we already started. So yeah. <laughs> the Jets like, and the Jets, baby. But I believe we're going to try our very best to do another event in New York this year. And when we do, you make sure you show up to this one too, Hennessy. And you sit right next to me again. So this time you can witness an L. Okay. <laughs> oh, we are yeah. planning a – should I tell them which, which game we're planning, TD, yet? Or should we save it? Well, I thought now? we were going to wait on the schedule to make sure. Well, I'll just say we're ideally looking for Jets-Dolphins at MetLife for one mm -hmm. of the events. We don't know what the schedule is going to be like. We don't know if that's going to work out. But that's what we're looking for. The reason why I, I pitched this to TD is because I know the Dolphins fan base, they have this thing called Miami Takeover. And there's a lot of Dolphins fans in the Northeast. So I feel like that would be a fun event <laughs> at, at MetLife. Yes. Oh, man. And don't worry, Bills Mafia. We are going to Buffalo. For sure. We just don't know we're if it's going to be against the Dolphins or the Patriots. And then we will probably go to Foxborough as well. We're trying to go to all four stadiums. I feel like if we yeah, go to Miami, might as well go to the most beautiful stadium Dolphins here. So. I want to go to Ooh, Dolphins. Who's one of the most beautiful stadiums? Uh, Foxborough. I don't know if you've been there. You probably haven't, but you should. I haven't. What happened? So is that true? Would you say that like New England is the best stadium? On, like, Dude, 100%. Sorry, they they literally have outlets like right now. Not like even right next to like where you have to walk a little bit or drive. Like literally – a couple of steps next to the stadium, just outlets and, and places to eat and all this different stuff. It's, it's a great time. Wow. Well, must be nice. Wait. They got a Victoria's Neil. secret there too, for, for, you know, your girlfriend when she don't want to, you know, watch you scream at old men playing with balls. <laughs> so that's always so an Mando, baby. What happened? So it's in the stadium. It's like right next to it. So the stadium's right here. And then, like, two feet over is, like, all these shopping outlets and, and places to eat and whatnot. Nice. Yeah. Really Neil asked if we could do a three-round mock. Uh, we're not going to do that tonight, Neil, but we will be doing yes. those a lot leading up to the NFL draft when the month turns into April, which will be mm. my birthday, by the way, April 1st. Haha. <laughs> um, we will be doing some mock drafts. I promise you that. Yeah, Seven Neil, don't worry. I'll, I'll smoke them. I'll smoke them. Kobe will smoke us. In mock yeah, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> Jimmy says respectfully, TD, a real mother effer, but it's mm. Richie all day, every day, baby. I don't but, F mothers. No, you go offensive tackle, protect a rod, and trade down. Mm. I don't F mothers. <laughs> That's good. Zach Wilson. <laughs> so you know, like, what about to say? What's wrong with that, bro? I... What you, Richie? You about to say something? You, I, I, you do mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he said too much <laughs> oh man Richie even with Rodgers shouldn't you think about quarterback yeah so the Jets are rumored to be eyeing a quarterback in the mid rounds now mm. it would definitely be a curveball if we see the Jets trade down and then draft like Bo Nix or something like that will be I'd a laugh. giant curveball and the only way they do that is if they're transparent with Aaron Rodgers about it because I feel like a lot of people <laughs> miss interpret what happened with the Jordan Love situation where Rodgers was upset that they drafted a quarterback. The reason why Rodgers was upset was because they didn't tell him that. They were not transparent. He found out the night of the draft that they went for a quarterback. If they went up to Aaron with their draft plans way before the draft and they told him, he would not have had a problem with it. And Aaron developed a really good relationship with Jordan Love in those three years. So I feel like if the Jets approached Aaron and said, hey, we're thinking to get our quarterback this year, I'm sure it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but I feel like we're going to aim for a quarterback in the mid rounds, not in the first round, but you never know. I, I don't want to, I, I know that it's 99% not happening, but there is a 1% chance of the Jets drafting a quarterback in the first round. 1% chance. Relax, Jets. Every time I say this, bro, Jets fans want to kill me. Every time I say there's a chance of us doing it, but you got to, you got to look at every single option. And he said, TD had a baby teeth last time. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> Don't do me like that, Henny. I thought we became good friends at the game, man. Nah, don't bro. I think you, what you did to me and Henny after Aaron went down. It's just business. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. That was a fun night, though. That was a fun night. I actually enjoyed the stadium, by the way. Y'all know how to get down. Y'all know how to have fun. But nah, it was bro, at that... the expense of the Buffalo Bills. So. Nah, bro. That yeah. stadium, we can, like, 
it, for me, my experience, like that was the only time I've ever seen that stadium like that. And obviously it wasn't like that for the rest of the season. And it's just a little glimpse of why this fan base is so special. Like that was realistic expectations of hype all yeah. in one. Like that was a playoff stadium and I've never seen anything like it before. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad I was goes, there. Yeah, bro. And, and not to mention, I think that game will always be, I mean, you're talking about a roller coaster. Yeah. I don't know how they won that game. Yeah. I still don't understand. You're right. That like, I've never thought about that. That was a roller coaster of emotions. You come in the game, you're as hyped as can be. Man, we got week one football. This is the Monday championship Monday night football. Game. Four plays in. Ah, everybody's out. Ah. <laughs> and then the game is back and forth and back and forth and it's crazy then you all just look like you're losing then the comeback route and it's like crazy and you guys win and dan over there crying to himself and the like, way that they won too oh, though no. with gibson with the way they win too let's yeah. not forget the bills get the ball first in overtime yeah and josh john goes three and out Bum. Yeah, josh allen won you the game Oh, yeah? How come we go down the field and win the game there? Three and out, punts it to Xavier Gibson, and the hard knocks star is the one that wins us that game. That will crazy, always man. be one of the craziest moments of my entire life as a fan. I don't Very think I'll ever crazy. experience that again. <laughs> Ho hopefully not. Um, Antonio with the $5. As a Jets fan, prefer to trade down to 13-17 and get Thomas and pick up best available offensive tackle in second. Think is the best move to push Lazard down chart. <laughs> yeah. Y'all are trying to trade Lazard, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that, but yeah. And Rogers get everybody paid. I will say the sad thing <laughs> everyone is, paid, yeah. Man. I mean, Alan Lazard should be like we're paying him number two, number three money. Like he's getting eleven million dollars to be a bump. My only hope is that Aaron Rodgers will help him out because he was good with the Packers because of Aaron and he was trash on the Jets last year. We shall <laughs> see. I do I do um think this is realistic though, Antonio. I do like that. Hey yo, Miggy, Richie Jets suck, suck, suck. <laughs> Damn. Thank you, Ao Miggy. Appreciate you, brother. Now this this is a good. He's a big big supporter of mine. Richie, my B day is April tenth. LOL. You think it will be smart to get Rattler in the third round? TD always get me laughing. Appreciate you, bro. Stay blessed. Well, salute, Neil. <laughs> happy almost birthday, Neil. How about April? 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 Yeah, absolutely love it. April is gonna be a really interesting month. I'm about to be an uncle. Congratulations. And it, it and it's gonna be a Bills fan. Oh, great. Extra congratulations. Still don't know what the gender is, which is driving me nuts. But hey, they're deciding to wait. And my brother-in-law is a huge Bills fan. You guys met him at the event. That's so interesting. Me, like, what, nephew. what happened in the family? Well, he, he's from his brother-in-law. So my brother-in-law. Uh, my sister's okay, yeah, never husband. Mind. Never mind. It's my he didn't vet him? What? Have I never, have I never met you him? So you didn't vet him or anything like that? Like right before, like once I started going like, like dating no, or way we the way we met is actually funny. I was in college in Brockport and we were going to the Jets Bills game. I remember I told you this, Dan. I went to four straight Jets Bills games in Buffalo when I was in college. Mm. And my sister, me and my friend, got picked up from my sister and she said, Yeah, I'm bringing a friend of mine. He's a Bills fan. I was like, Oh, okay, whatever. And my sister picks me up and it's, and they're not, she, my sister doesn't have a boyfriend at this time and she's just bringing a friend. And then on the way mm. there, I'm noticing. Right. This is a little bit more than a friend. And I'm like thinking to myself, my sister is falling in love with a Buffalo Bills fan in front of my eyes. This Lord can't happen. Me. It's okay. My sister turned into an Eagles fan, so it doesn't get much worse than that. Oh, my oh that's gosh. Oh. Yeah, dude, it's 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 rough. Richie, where did you go to college? SUNY Brockport. It's a uh, half hour from Rochester, New York. It's up in, it's, it was in Bills County. I've never Bills heard of baby. It's like, you ever heard of Rochester, New York? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a half hour from there. It's a it's a it's a New York State school, SUNY Brockport. Not a big school. Um, it it was the it was a bad time, because that was the Josh Allen Sam Darnold debates, and oh. I was losing them all. Sam Darnold. Wonder why though? I know you remember this game, Dan. Rookie season, Sam versus Josh Allen. I was there front row. Sam had a crazy play, and the Jets won that game, and that was like my Super Bowl, to go back into college and just curse out all the Bills fans at the bar. That's oh good. Oh, wow. You're ballsy, man. Bro, I was in college. Are you kidding me? I was sitting there like, Ugh. you got stones, baby. I love it. Are you kidding me? I was a different breed in college, you know. 
Hell yeah. We've evolved. Built different. We've we've evolved. We've matured. How about that? No. Oh. We've all matured. been through it though. Yeah. We have. Right? Yeah. Richie, make sure when you send baby shower gifts, it's all jet stuff, bro. Luckily, he's a Knicks fan. So it cancels it out. So we share that. So oh. I already got I already got my nephew slash niece Nick's stuff. <laughs> Baby already been brought into right. the world at disadvantage. What do you uh, mean? Stop, Richie. All right, Come on, bro. Listen, y'all need he hates the Jets so much where I would never do that to him. I, I, I would I wouldn't do that to him. <laughs> I was yeah, but I your about sister, it. she's a Jets fan. She's not really into sports, so she is a Jets fan. But like, she'll wear a she'll wear a Bills jersey. She'll support the Bills for Michael. Like, she's not really a super into sports mm. as much as I've tried throughout the years. Interesting. Well, I can keep um, carrying this conversation if you got anybody wants. I no, like I, I, I feel like I've hit on everything. Like I, I've hit on I've hit on the free agency. We've hit on draft a little bit. Come on, it's just kind of like, just like a goal. You. Like I, gotta take, listen, I gotta take a dude. quick break, man. Well, so there's I mean, one listen, thing we know. Didn't... Like, I would love nothing more for me to come with like a litany of moves that this Buffalo Bills team has made, or a wish list of things that this Buffalo Bills team could still make. But I got nothing, boys. I you know what? Next know. week, next week I'll come, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start writing some content ideas down, and I'll uh, make sure to keep us moving through the stream next week. I mean, well, we got, we got I mean, we've been yapping for an hour and a half, baby. We got, OBJ tomorrow. we got OBJ tomorrow. We keep talking about that. You know, the Super Bowl move. TD, uh, I already, I already, I already uh, vented to you about my OBJ thoughts. OBJ <laughs> is better than any that. receiver on the Patriots roster That's right wild. now. Maybe, maybe if it was why is it wild? Well, why is it wild? He, he can't play a full season. I said it before. Who's better than him? Who's better than him? Who on your Kendrick, roster? Is better than I would him. take Kendrick Bourne, Demario Douglas. I would take KJ Osborne over him. I would take all three of my guys over him. So, dude, so so the past four years, he's had 565 yards, 305. He had 232 and 319. Uh, last year, he played 14 games for the Baltimore Ravens, and he lost the number one role to a rookie. Uh, he didn't lose it, Dan. <laughs> he couldn't the He rookie. couldn't get on the field. He couldn't get on the field. So, like, Stop. I would say, yeah, he lost it because he couldn't get on the field. <laughs> like... Yeah. Um, I mean, listen, like, I mean, honestly, like I will give TD a credit because like he did have like a good take on OBJ, right? Like he's, he's a good number three a guy, solid, solid third, fourth option. And he 100%. is a good insurance 100%. policy. And so he is a good insurance policy because say that Waddle was out or say that Tyreek Hill was out. Not like nothing scared me about the Dolphins pass game at all. If one of those two guys was out, was not concerned at all because I knew that that one that was out there was going to be locked down. Well, this year is going to be a solid insurance policy. This year, the, the Bills going to be terrified with DeMar Hamlin starting in the secondary. So, yeah, this is going to be real interesting. Man. Hey, so listen. Person, hey, hey listen. Person, you know what, dude? Man. And so you still got to worry about our offense, baby. And so you still got to worry Bill? about our offense right now. Oh, yeah. Still got to. And so you yeah, know James it. Cook's ascending. And so you know Shakir our slots a stud. I always I like it's only about to get better. So hold up, hold up. You know what, Dan? Let's let's segue. Let's let's segue a little bit. You know, we never talk about the Buffalo Bills. I feel a little bad for you, but you know what? Dan is a man <laughs> of many NFL talents. His, he does not just talk about the Buffalo Bills, as we all know. Yeah. But you know, I think I feel like every single year it's Stephon Diggs trade, Stephon Diggs trade, Stephon Diggs trade, and every single yeah. year he's just clearly not happy. I mean, is it is it going to get to a point where something's going to happen? Like, is this is this the time where, let's say it's draft day, and yeah. we get one of those things like you know two years ago where you had AJ Brown getting traded and who else got traded? I think like Hollywood Brown got got yeah. traded too. A bunch of different receivers mm -hmm. getting traded in the first round on day one. Do yeah. we see something like that with with Stephon Diggs? Well, here's the deal: his uh, his salary was fully guaranteed as of uh, last weekend. So the mm. thing is, is is that trust me, bro. Like all of us are getting frustrated with his tweets and him like welcoming like all of this drama during the off season and stuff along those lines. This is what I think the Buffalo Bills are doing right now. I feel like that they essentially proved to themselves that they can win football games last year without him, right? Because offense was literally just around 
Mr. James Cook, Shakir, and Dalton Kincaid. So I think what the Bills are wanting to do this offseason is, is that they want to draft their wide receiver too, but they want to find somebody that could eventually become their wide receiver number one. If I'm a gambling man, we'll trade him or release him next offseason. But he will be on the Bills this year. And I think he'll still be in a 1,000-yard guy too. Because, because now that we have, hopefully we end up getting that wide receiver too, or maybe Curtis Samuel actually can draw those double teams off of him or something. I still think he will be productive for us this year, but I do think that we're putting together a plan to walk away from him next year. Do you feel confident too, though? Do you feel confident too that da- that you guys will be able to utilize him correctly? Because I feel like down the stretch, when you switched offensive coordinators, we kind of just saw the downfall of of Stephon Diggs. But not even just that, with all of the issues going on with him too. I mean, there has to be some demise even from the coaching staff to be like, well, we have better guys, and and you're just creating problems. You know, do you still think that they're going to be able to get him involved in us? I feel like that's that's a concern amongst yeah. Bills fans. It's- is you know, down the stretch, you didn't see him. So it's interesting, right? Because when Joe Brady took over, like really anytime you see an offensive coordinator take over in the middle of the season, it's not like that they're drafting a full new playbook, right? Like they're really just utilizing the the ingredients from the former coordinator and just trying to put their own positive spin, but it's still the exact same playbook. Joe Brady ran the ball a hell of a lot more than Ken Dorsey did. He was more of a run first and then just like short passes right up the middle and that was Shakir and then that was Dalton Kincaid. I think you can also put into a fact that I think Diggs did end up getting hurt after week five in London, and I think he was just playing through it. That's why I think that he wasn't able to win and succeed as much against those double teams. Because, like, I mean, dude, he was getting double teamed like crazy his entire career, but I think that injury sort of affected him a bit as well. Um, I do. I do. And I think now that he has a full offseason and now that we have somebody that can also create separation – like not somebody that they're not worried about because I don't, everyone loves Gabe Davis for some reason, but we're talking about a guy that maybe has like four games worth of highlights. He was an exclusively a 50, 50 guy and his hands were even suspect Had a lot of very key drops last year. Um, we upgraded to a point where we're going to be having somebody on the field like a Curtis Samuel, where you're not going to be able to double team, this offense as long as they stay healthy. So I do see Diggs still being in a thousand yard guy and I do see him reemerging next year, but interesting. Oh yeah. Interesting. He, definitely, he definitely should. It's just, um, I think you just put so much stock on the King K then yeah. every, every bit of stock you have in him is optimistic. It's fair. Yeah. But I, I just feel like that's not going to be enough. He, even if he elevates, that's a good thing. But I feel yeah. like you're still one guy away from feeling great about the offense moving forward. Yeah, one no, guy. dude. Dude, listen, like that's exactly why I'm pounding the table for an A.D. Mitchell. I'm fine with an Xavier Leggett. Truly like a fast boundary guy that can stretch the field. I do agree with you that we do need another talent so we can really unlock him. I love Kincaid. And I do think, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I think, like, this is my hot take for the Bills. Dalton Kincaid is going to finish second in receptions, maybe even first. I will let you guys know after the draft. But I do think that that's going to be what the Bills' offense is going to look like next year. It's going to be still run first with James Cook. um, And then it's going to be sort of the – so the – so the Chiefs mentality when it comes into offense, I really think that we're going to be utilizing Knox and Kincaid way more than the receivers we have out on the field. I got to be honest with you. The longer Stefan Diggs is on the bills, the less valuable he seems. Yeah. When you say yeah. things like Kincaid is going to lead the team in receptions, he's supposed to be out there getting it like Tyreek. You know, hey, bam yeah. here, bam there. But it's always like, an occasional digs. Yeah, he'll get the big play. He'll get his yards, but yeah. he's not all over the field. I feel like you could have gotten him. I, I honestly feel like there are $13 million per year guys that can do what Diggs is doing. Yeah, for sure. For the team. Especially now because he's going to be 30 next year. And I mean, mm-hmm. listen, I know that there's some receivers out there that have done it well into their 30s because I'm pretty sure Tyree kills 32, right? He's 30 as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
well, like he's still doing it, obviously. But I mean, you do start to see a decline in receivers once they start cracking that, unless it's some sort of anomaly. Um, he's dude. I mean, he's definitely not the same, but he's regressing at a very slow level. But the regression is still there. It's not a lie. And people are ready to rip my throats out when I say this, but Stephon Diggs is regressing. So do you think this is officially his last season? Yeah, we have him on contract for three more years, but next year isn't out because the cap savings would significantly outweigh the dead cap for the following year. So I have a feeling that we're going to test the trade market for him. I still think he has value. I'm not going to say he's a first round like trade target. Maybe we can get a third off of him. But if not, no, 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 dude. Listen, I think that we're planning on moving away from him this next might be a might be a post June first next year. Yeah, might be. Interesting. (sighs) Did you guys get into the super chats while I was gone? We were waiting for you. (laughs) Hey, Richie, my birthday is April tenth. You think it will be smart and to get a rattler in the third round? With TD always gets me laughing. Appreciate you, bro. Stay oh, bust. Yeah, we, we, re- we did read this, but I didn't say about Rattler. I, if, I remember I didn't say anything about Spencer Rattler. I mean, he's definitely an intriguing prospect. I like him more in the fourth or fifth. Raw. He's, he's, he's raw. very. He's a he's a polarizing prospect, man. Yeah. The more I read, he's, I don't know. he's the off the field problems too. I think is is kind of the questions. I think it's all going to depend on how he interviews. Uh, but he performed really, really well at the Senior Bowl. He had a pretty decent combine too. Honestly, I don't think he's he was originally like a you know fourth, fifth round projection. I think that he's honestly going to start rising up draft boards, especially because of supply and demand at the quarterback position and all of like the rumors about who's taking a quarterback in the first and 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 who's trading up for one in the first. I think um I think that he's going to be a guy that goes a lot earlier than people yeah. expect just for that lone fact. Yeah. Well, first off, someone in the chat said Josh Allen is trash without Diggs. Listen, (laughs) with Diggs, man, like, dude was integral to his development. Like, without Diggs, I really don't think that Josh would be where he is today, but he has 1,000%, like, outgrown that. And if you can't see the proof in that, just look at the numbers from week six all the way right until, like, the end of that season, and you'll see that the target share – was being spread all across the field and dig just essentially was wiped off of the face of the planet. So with all of our offensive efficiency, which was still like, damn, like number one in EPA all year, top three in EPA by itself with digs, not being involved hardly. Nah, I don't buy that anymore. Will is saying pray for Tyson y'all for real. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. We talk to him as much as we can. His recovery is doing well. I saw that he's pretty active right in the Madden League, which is nice, and he's still on Twitter, which is good. He's talking his shit on Twitter, so I appreciate that. <laughs> but of course, of course, man, we keep him in his yeah, yeah, we keep him in our prayers all the time. Absolutely, he's got to go fund me on his Twitter too, so y'all should check. Yeah, that out. yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. guys. He's been hit with some pretty serious medical bills, so if anybody is you know feeling generous, wants to help him out, certainly do that. Yeah, I mean, you guys Twitter. know his Twitter. It's probably, um, it's the same as his YouTube, Master at Work. He has that link there, so we'll greatly appreciate it. If you guys can go check him out, click that GoFundMe. Um, we really appreciate it, man. And we're always thinking of Tyson. We're excited to have him back eventually, man. Yes, and he still knows the Patriots suck, so it's good news. <laughs> Does he? It's I'm a Bills Dude, fan, and most <laughs> it's I'm a Bills fan, and most Bills fans blow his tweets way out of proportion, ninety nine percent of the time. Um, I'll tell you what, though. I feel like if that Minnesota thing like didn't happen right before he went to Buffalo, we wouldn't be right. So yeah. it was kind of something that he put on himself. But then again, I mean, these football players are regular guys. Like they're not only thinking about football, right? So I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Diggs was talking about just something random in his life. Somebody in my chat suggested he's like, "No, dude, I swear to God, he got his girl pregnant." Like read the tweets again and have that in your mind doesn't make sense. Like, dude, like we have no idea what like dude. Yeah, we have no idea what he means. But no, I get it. Alton V, my boy in the chat. Appreciate you. Patreon is coming in. soon, folks. The link is pinned in the chat. I'm sorry, the link is now on Patreon. If you guys want to go on there and check it out. Also want to give a gigantic shout out again to 
BetUS because BetUS is powered by, well, this show is being powered by BetUS. And you guys know we also have a daily show. And if you're not aware of our show by now, how are you not watching the boys every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 3 o'clock p.m.? We're live on BetUS TV. Not only we live there on BetUS TV, but of course they have a great sports book that you guys should consider making an account right now. We talked about it at the beginning of the show and just want to remind you guys that they got a lot of odds out here of what you can get on BetUS. NFL future bets. Put your money where your mouth is. Who do you got winning the AFC Conference? Who do you got winning the AFC East or other respected divisions? Let's see the odds on the AFC Conference winners. They got the Buffalo Bills at plus 650 to represent the AFC in the big game. The Dolphins are at plus 1,000. And the Jets are at plus 1,200. And the New England Patriots are all at the bottom at plus 8,000. This is BS. <laughs> this is <laughs> wow. So you telling me that the Broncos? You telling me the Broncos and the Raiders got a better chance than us? How does that make sense? And so, hundred bucks brings the eight grand, baby. Make it happen. Hundred dollars, eight I'd grand. I say we're gonna win, but eight if grand you, if for you a could, bill. Like, put me in the top ten. I'd bet on that. <laughs> um, we wild. shall see. Hundred twenty-five percent sign-up bonus on your first three deposits, up twenty-five hundred dollars. Go take advantage of that, folks. Link in the description of. The video. Shout out to BetUS as always. BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. Let's go, baby. Shout out to BetUS. Let's get into the Patreon callers. Don't forget to hit that like button on your way into the show, everybody. We'd greatly appreciate that if you did not already hit that like button. Dan, you want to remind me, how many like buttons do we have hit? My friend, let's see. I have a feeling you're going to put me in a bad mood, Richie. Let's scroll on <laughs> down, bro. 417 of you fools watching us right now. We appreciate you. And only 289. Actually, that's pretty solid. Thank you so much for all the like buttons, but let's get better. Let's get up to 350. I think we can do it. 392 people watching. 296 have liked the button. Let's do it. Love it. Bring them on in. Bring them on in. Who do you think's first? Glenn. Nope. Andy. Nope. There he is. I got it right. <laughs> of course. Yep. You did get it right. And you should be ashamed of yourself for the shit you were talking yesterday on the Dolphin Brown table. What are you talking I about? I told you man? I'd be watching. Why you be oh, watching? Wow. Mind your business, bro. Told you. Keep your friends close. Keep your enemies closer. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I hit all three. I hit all three of your streams yesterday, right in a row. Got off with Dan, then jumped on with Richie. Got off with Richie, went right to yours. No. Uh, He's saying two is in the same league as Josh Allen. Get that shit out of here. <laughs> he said that in the huddle and today, nerve. too, Andy. He did say that in the huddle today. It's I know it's he leads disgusting. the league in passing yards. Did you not know that? <laughs> I could lead the league in passing yards with that offense. That's not impressive. <laughs> yes, I really could probably like throw it farther into it too. Andy, you're a hater. You wish you had what we had, the best quarterback in the division. <laughs> yeah. You're a joke. Mm. Damn. <laughs> so you're just farting the mic? Because if you did, I would have loved that. <laughs> I did <laughs> I actually. Someone just farted in the mic. I thought, and Andy then and then you got myself. and then you got the retirement home over there in the top left corner, wow. at least on my screen. Thirty six year old, thirty six year old offensive lineman that hasn't stayed healthy in five years is gonna save you. Thirty three. Come on, Dan. No, he's thirty six. I looked it up yesterday. Oh, he's thirty six. Even better. Experience. <laughs> Experience. Yeah. Okay. Even better. Smith, Smith thirty six. Yeah, yes. bro, he's got that. Uh, hey, he's been in the league for a minute, bro. He's got that. A he's got the AARP, baby. Hey, and I thought hey, man, you were eight games, seven. He, he's, hey, 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 he's thirty-three years old. I was right. I just checked. Thirty. Oh, I thought I saw thirty-six, but still, and both him and Rodgers weren't e weren't even in high school when the last time the Miami Dolphins won a playoff game. I mean, why oh. we make it? Why we make it believe that veterans don't have any value in the league? Like veterans are good. Not when they're as injury prone as he is. Andy, how I mean, old are you, Andy? He played. He played thirteen games last year. Thirty-two games. You you what? Thirty-two. 
Well, well, how how old were you uh, when the Bills when the Bills won a Super Bowl? I'll be thirty three. How old? How I'll old be thirty three. How old <laughs> were your, your, your parents? Huh? How old were your parents when the Bills won a Super Bowl? How old were your parents' parents? How old was your ancestors? It never happened, Andy. Gosh, why do you sit up here and talk? Just like, like your adult life, life when Miami had to win a playoff game, TD. Listen, listen, we're gonna win one uh-huh. this year. Mm. Damn, bro. <laughs> and so I do like that with comeback that he gave. He was like, "How old are you?" When 33. My new thing is I'm going to be like, when I'm 33, my friend. <laughs> Perfect. Optimism. Who's next, Richie? Guess. Let's say. Jimmy Casket. Uh, what's up, Jimmy Casket? Free agency is going well. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You know, we yeah, got out. Jimmy, this- let him know. Get, we got our receiver too. We revamped the O line. You know, when I saw a lot of Jets fans on day one, you know, getting so mad at the at, uh, at the front office for not doing anything, I knew that, you know, down the line there was gonna still be still be people available, and we got them: Tyron Smith, Mike Williams, and um, yeah. So this actually, you know, this actually transitions to the draft. You know, at the tenth pick, what are the Jets gonna do? And um, my opinion is that. We got to trade down, and I think that's the best option. You know, a lot of people are saying that we got to draft an O-line, um, but we've hit the O-line so much during free agency, so I think we should focus on, on some other positions. And I feel like we could still – I feel like we could get Brock Bowers, but we already got Conklin, and he wasn't even that – he's not even that bad. Like, tight end isn't a need. We got Yaboa there, Ruckert, Koontz. We, you know, we got we got some solid depth at um, tight end, and – Conklin, he's still pretty good. He had like 500 yards last season, I think, in a terrible offense. So I think tight end is fine. We got to trade down, maybe trade down a few picks, get Brian Thomas and a second round pick. Because to be honest, we got we need we have a lot of depth. We need to we need to get like safety. We have no depth at all. It's just Tony Adams, Chuck Clark, and someone else. Linebacker, we should get some depth. Um, receiver, we should get some depth. Um, I do think we should. You know, Alan Lazard. Honestly, honestly, I think Aaron Rodgers could fix him. It's not that outlandish to say because it's not like Alan Lazard has always been a bad receiver. It's just, you know, last season he's been bad. So what I think, I think Aaron Rodgers could fix him. And, you know, he, he costs like $10 million a year. So you kind of have to play him if we can't trade him. So I think maybe Alan Lazard can become a decent receiver free. Hopefully. And uh, I think we're we're ready for the we're ready for the season. You know, Let's we go, Jimmy. great great team, one of the best rosters on paper. It's time to transition to the field and hopefully go far in the playoffs. That's my hope. Let's go, Jimmy. I mean, I feel like you just recapped the Jets off season so beautifully, Jimmy. That was amazing. It was quality because- analysis. It was quality, quality analysis, analysis. and he finished it off. Analysis. I enjoyed it. We're, All we're seven excellent. Minutes. Hater. Yeah, drink that tea. Whatever the heck that is. Trophy husband? Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Trophy husband? Hey, you know what? Does that mug make you feel beautiful, TD? It does. It does. It really does. Since somebody <laughs> sent the super chat of me being an old man. I am. Not a day past 30. Are you kidding me, TD? Thank you. Trophy husband. Uh, Jose with the Super Chat. Where is Master at Work? Uh, Master at Work is recovering right now. If you don't know what happened, definitely go check out his Twitter account. He has all the updates you need over there. Master at Work. He's recovering right now. And uh, definitely send up a prayer for our guy, Master at Work. We're thinking of him, and we're in constant communication with him at all times. So that's... Yes. Well, guys, we'll keep you up to date with anything that comes comes along. But he he's uh, he's been active on socials. And like Dan said, he's running the Madden Leagues. That, yep. I'm very fortunate to not be a part of. Last year was rough. <laughs> dude, dude, man. It's, I'll get text messages at like 3 a.m. Being like, hey, man, this is the hey, Raiders hey. guy. And so he cussed me out and he quit the game halfway. You better ban him right now, bro. Yeah, dude, dude. Blessings. Hey, when, does the, when does the new Madden come out? August, typically, August. right? 
I haven't played the I haven't played Madden since last August. You haven't because got the Josh, one. yeah, because Josh Allen's on the cover. I refuse. Bro, so I, I got, a, got I got the I got the Xbox got One. Months. I got the Xbox One. I don't have like the new Xboxes, and I was told by my brother that it's not worth getting the new Maddens if you don't have like the new Xbox. So I haven't had the new Madden in like sure. two years. Yeah, I'm just waiting till they get rid of Josh Allen off the cover. I will never play that version. And so just start streaming uh, some Madden and Kobe, and uh, you get up as a write off. Really? Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. What the? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah dude. Say less. I'm going to go buy the most expensive Xbox right after this. Yeah, oh, for yeah. real. As what well, it's a write off for taxes. And so as long as, like, like and so you it's, use it. Yeah, it's equipment. Yeah, isn't the Xbox it? One a computer? Yeah. Yes. I watch myself on YouTube with my Xbox all the time to help my views go up. And stream. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'd probably play the game. Yeah. Fresh. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'd, probably, I'd probably play the game you know i mean i'm not an accountant or anything but you know i'd probably you know. <laughs> go and so i'm not a tax lawyer or anything but i'd probably recommend you you know go, go some more goals, here? <laughs> does he look old here i still look good yo finally made cd old i still look good damn bro you age beautifully i still look good baby that's good cool. wine and that's 99 year old me Hundred percent, man. Wanted to say during the huddle, didn't get to. Jets will make the playoffs this year. Bills will win the AFC East. Dolphins will miss the playoffs, and the Patriots will have another mediocre year. I feel like Staff this is just a flashback to what people boy. were saying last year. Yeah, and our quarterback it's went down, crap. so it's the same crap, just different year. We just gotta have our quarterback upright, baby. Yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> Let's go, Aaron. Prove the doubt I was wrong. Thank you, staff boy. Week one, met life. He tears the other leg. Oh, come on, Colby. You're better than that. that. Wow. Look. Hey, look. I'm banging on wood. I'm hoping it don't happen. Oh, my. I'm, I'm, I'm banging on wood. I'm banging Bad on Kobe. wood. It don't happen. That would be the most Jets thing to happen, though. That would be the most Jets thing to happen. You know what? The I'm, most I'm, Patriots I'm, thing to happen is that you'll never witness the playoffs for the rest of your life because you had a how dynasty. That, how is that the Patriots thing? The, because the you had Patriots a dynasty for your whole life and you're spoiled and now you'll just be... 25 years from now, you'd be like, yeah, well, did you see those six rings we got? <laughs> like The most Patriots-like thing, the most Patriots-like thing is the, is the would be, be the for us forever. to be a mediocre team headed into the season and then still win the Super Bowl. That's that's what a Patriots-like thing is. That's the old be. Patriots. It's the new wave, baby. How new age. Let them know, Glenn. Glenn right on the tell them, man. Tell them, Glenn, with the AFC East Roundtable Polo. Look at this guy. Look at the Polo. Look at the Polo. Look at the Polo. Look at yeah. Hey, Kobe, when you don't do the um you don't do the um, round table draft again? Yeah, me and uh me and Ryan have been trying trying to figure some stuff out. It's been very busy between the AFC East round table and everybody's own respective channels to try to meet in the middle, but we are hoping to yeah. get back with a post free agency draft. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, hey. we got you, buddy. Hey Richie, I do I, I do agree. You cannot blame you cannot count on injuries. Get no more having on or anything. So you have to just hope your players play. But you did say something that's interesting. Uh oh. If I was a judge and I actually traded back and there was a quarterback there at like 16 or 17, like Bo Nick, I think mm. I would I would pull the trigger. The reason why is let's just say Aaron stays healthy. When when are you gonna pick the next two years? If he stays for two years, what are we gonna what, what? the top 10? Top 15? I hope not. If you do that, then you're doing so now you're preparing for the future. And, yeah, and I mean that's guy that, backing him up. Yeah, that's the that's the thing. I mean, if we want to roll a three quarterback, you know, I mean you're in the trade back, get a second, pick up a quarterback uh, in the first round, he could sit the bench. Then next year he could be the backup and then go from there. Because right. with Aaron, you have to think about this. And I this ain't trying to throw his injuries on him, but he's the first person that I could ever remember coming back from an ACL at age 40. Mm. Yeah. I can't remember any other athlete. And he almost did it in in the in the same season. 
somehow. Well, I'm just he wasn't coming back. That but that's a, that's him getting some damn media talk. He had that's to cool. stay in the news. He wasn't coming back. He was trying. No to. doctor was on ever right off on that. He was on the practice field. You never know. Was, we were out of we were out of the dance. We were out of the dance. Oh, we could, we'll never know. He wasn't coming back. But like we said, we have we have. Let's put it this way: Miami had two players, big players, hurt on ACL. Uh, Buffalo had two, and and now uh, Jets have two. Now those six. We ain't getting all six of them back playing at a high level. There's no way. Ain't happening. I always say that. Which ones are going to come back playing high level? That's and which right. ones are going to have Which ones will come back and play high level and which ones not? Now, my bet would be the youngest player would come back and play good. The oldest player wouldn't, but because out, um, because Roger plays quarterback, he doesn't have to stress his ACL as much as everybody, all the other players do, like a linebacker or a um, defensive end or wide receiver and stuff. That's the thing. You got a point, Glenn. You're you're, you're mean, raising the but, questions. No, very true. You're, you're raising those but questions that of, we're all thinking about. Yeah, one of those six players are not – there's no way all six of them coming back and playing at the thing. Now, I don't know which one. What is coming back and playing, but like I, I think I think Chubb is gonna be a long, he don't be a long drawn out one. He probably ain't gonna come back till week eight. If I mean, not, there, there are Chubb, instances. What? And so with Bradley Chubb or Nick Chubb, you're talking about Bradley Chubb. Bradley, Bradley. Chubb. That's it. Bradley I mean, you Chubb. also gotta look at like, like that's true. Like Brees Hall. Brees Hall is a perfect example. He tore his ACL week seven, and he was ready to go week one. This past year, it played all younger. 17 games. Younger. 100%. I said younger guys have a better chance than older people, older yeah. guys. That's yeah, why sure. I said uh, Miami's other defensive end probably will make close to the beginning of the year. Jalen Phillips. Well, Yeah, Phillips will probably be yeah, close to the beginning of the year. Week two but, or three, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, it'd be something like that. But I don't expect Chubb back till like further on in the season. Yeah, and stuff. Those ACLs are bad. I had one, and I know I'm an older folk. It took over a year in physical therapy and everything. So how do you do it? it, it <laughs> what? And so how did you walking, tear your ACL? Just walking. Shit. Mm. Felt it pop and said, "Holy shit! What the, <laughs> what the hell? Never, That's how what the is. hell? Fell to the ground, and <laughs> I'm like, oh." They put me in the boot and everything, did all the surgery and stuff, and it took a whole year. And Glad. I don't even run. I won't even run like full blast anymore because of it. Now, I'm not an athlete like those guys are anymore. 55 is a long time. Ain't going to do what they do and, and stuff. And they are, they are better facilities, better people, yes, better medical and all that stuff. But it's still – you still feel it. Years after it happened. Well, it's tough. glad to hear you're on the other but side now, of the ACL. Glenn, thank you for the call, and uh, yeah. we'll see you next <laughs> yeah, week. Yeah, you guys have a, good day. See, yeah, you you know, too, have, have a good time. Thank you, man. Glenn man, was doing I, the thank you leg on the way down. Why does this happen every time, dude? Birthday balloons. Birthday balloons for you, Glenn. Birthday I think balloons it's a for point you. up, or it's what, – what's the birthday balloon signal? I forgot. It's a weird thing. Is it peace? Yeah, mine don't work, man. So I need to turn it on or something? Yeah, I don't know. Can I turn it off? Because I just. All right. Some... Next up, making waves. <laughs> He's back. Let's go. Making oh, waves. Oh, my God. He left. Gone. He left. Mm. Damn, making waves. I was excited to see you, man. It's been a minute. Damn. The tidal wave left. The tsunami. We got, we got all the regular. We got. Oh, no. He's back. My bad, I hit the wrong button. What up, man? <laughs> What's up, guys? I'm sorry I've been absent for such a while, but uh, um, I've been uh, trying to finish my school for nurse practitioner, and it's been very busy. But uh, I actually only I'm really to, to wish uh, Master at Work my best. I saw a uh, a post that I got from him, and I was like, man, I don't know. Like, I haven't heard anything about this because I've been gone. And I do. Uh, he'll be in my prayers, and I just wish him the best in his recovery. 
and all the issues that he's been going through. Um, but for you guys, uh, miss you guys. I can't wait for the season to start. I'll be done with school here in a few months, and I won't have to deal right. with it anymore. Well, best of luck. So, Congratulations. I'm excited about that. And uh, I am. Uh, I just have one question today, and it's uh, obviously for TD. Um, who do you think that we're trying to save for? It might be Odell Beckham at this point. He's coming in for a visit tomorrow. Um, I'm I'm curious. I have no clue how much he may actually cost. That's what I want to know. But um, like they've been restructuring everybody. Yeah. Um. But again, we got to have money for the draft picks, and you know they got some guys they got to resign for long term for the future. So they could also be looking to try to bring some cap over into next season. Yeah, I was just I was just curious. I've been like doing a little bit of research on it, and I know that. Jarvis Landry wanted to come back and all that stuff. I wouldn't be opposed to that either. Um, but I, I think I, that, I'm my bad. I, I rather OBJ than Jarvis at this point, though. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just doing it for like history purposes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Bring the old dolphin back. But uh, I, I really think that we still need to um, secure an, a better old line. Am I like the only one that thinks that? Uh, yeah, but remember, you know how they are. They want to do it by committee. They're not really that concerned about all that when you look at it. Um, I'm actually interested to see where David Bakhtiari um, goes. I think the Jets have still been rumored to potentially be bringing him in. Yeah. Um, but I think that's an interesting signing for whoever gets him. So that's something that, you know, I wouldn't personally be opposed to. Um, so um, it's going to be interesting. I mean, I think we just got to wait and see every move made and then evaluate it from there. Yeah, I know. I'm excited about the next season. Um, we'll see how it goes. Richie, I got to take off, but you know my son says hi. <laughs> well, tell him I said hello, man. It's great to see I you. Hope take it easy, well, brother. Man. Take care. Make Peace. it easy. Thanks, bro. Yeah, man. Oh, my God. It's the peace sign. Every time somebody leaves, man, it's birthday balloons here. That's <laughs> crazy. Know, it's not <laughs> Hold up. Come on. It's yeah, not working for me. Hey. Birthday balloons got me all messed up. Did you turn it on, Kobe, or something? I, I didn't even know this was a thing until I started looking dumb live. Hey! Hey! What's good? What's good? Okay. Yeah. okay. I was just, I was just, yeah. um, I was watching, um, uh, I was on Twitter for a bit, and I, and I watched a new, uh, new, uh, trailer for, uh, the Aliens movie. The Aliens movie, if you know, from the 80s. 80s and yo, I was hearing both hearing both you guys and and the movie and the trailer. And I spooked the shit out of me. It really spooked the shit out of me. I was like, I need to turn one of these off. I need to turn it off. But I couldn't. I couldn't mute it or anything. Why did but, it spook um, you? No, no, you know, like you know, you know, Aliens, the horror movie. Yeah, of course. Wait, and you hear and you hear that. And you hear that loudly with other sounds and pushed into it. Oh man! Yeah, it, it, no, it, yeah. Oops, it, yeah. Um, but I want, but here's the thing I want to say: TD, TD, yes, bro, TD, mm -hmm. bro. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear anything about about us being us Jet fan, Jet fan being the wor worst or anything. You are worse than like you were saying in the uh, huddle that we're the Cowboys. No, I'm the one to say you are the Cowboys. Literally. You guys are the when Cowboys. You, that, like... you literally are the Cowboys. Cowboy no, fans. No. You literally are. They are. Like, like you guys pump up your team so high and mighty. So high and mighty. Oh, we're going to the Super Bowl. Oh, we're going to do this. Oh, we're going to do that. Do that. And then what happens in, what happens in the December? What happens in what happens in the playoffs? You guys don't win anything. Oh, but oh, oh but we're gonna win it next year. We're gonna win it next year. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna really next year. Next gonna be our year, man. Next year gonna be our year. <laughs> next year, baby, man, man. Yeah. He got you. Lasell, you're trying you're trying to say so you got him in a corner right now. You got him in a corner. Lasell's he, trying to say, right. but what happens in December and January for the Dolphins? Well, Lasell, I gotta ask you, what happens in September, October, November, December, and January for but, the Jets? But with our, but with us, yes, we don't hot, we don't. If we start losing this, losing in September, not in December, we don't say anything after afterwards. But if you guys start losing in December, oh. I bet you still say, I bet you still say, oh, 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 Super Bowl, Super Bowl, don't worry about it, Super Bowl. Sale, you oh, 
you must have forgot Black Friday, which is literally on the back end of the season. All the trash y'all were talking to Dolphin fans about what y'all were about to do to us. So I don't want to hear it. You were wrong. We demolished you. Yes. We ate you for breakfast, and you are beneath us. Deal with it, bro. Yeah, but now you don't have a good team. Good team at all now, though. No, you don't have a good team at all now. We still better than the Jets. No, no, you're not. No, you're not. Oh yeah, you got Kendall Fuller. If you do, Kendall Fuller. <laughs> if you do for you, he's still, he's still only a cornerback <laughs> number two. He's only cornerback cornerback number two level, bro. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't nothing. He ain't nothing. We got two of them. Y'all got Aaron Rodgers. Enough said. Damn. Um, <laughs> what, uh, TD, a... w w why don't you remind the people, when was the last time, what happened when the uh, Tua and Aaron Rodgers versed in the season where he was bona fide washed in your eyes? All we talk about are the things that are happening recently and um, most recently, Richie. You're trying to go back two years, bro. Come on now. Well, well that's the last time I saw him play. The Super Bowls, bro. But Tua got a concussion in that game. Oh, look at the excuse. And he you hear this? It's so proof. It's so was that like, not his last game of the season? He Aaron got Rodgers cooked you in a game in Miami in a season where he's he watched. Benefit, he benefited from a concussed Tua. Had Tua not gotten concussed, he would have been he, we would have won that game. Oh my gosh. You are not the what is, I, man. Not the what is. What, what was Tua? Didn't Tua get a concussion in that game that ended his season? He didn't play the last three or four. You mean when hey, y'all should have taken him out and y'all chose not to and almost ended his career? That one? No, no, no. This was the different one. Kobe. Oh, the, the other one. Yeah. Got you. Got you. Yeah. This was the late in the season. And so Aaron, my point is Aaron Rodgers went into Miami and beat Tua. And he will be yeah, doing but that again we were, this year. We were beating them bad. He came back when Tua start showing symptoms with interceptions. Those are symptoms. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah. Izzy's in the house. What up? Izzy, up, I like the shades, man. Clean. Thank you. Thank you. I had to show Lowski how to be chill, you know? Thank you. Please. <laughs> somebody. Yeah. He's got to relax, man. Though, you got to relax. He looked too cool with the shades on to be that angry, man. You got to relax. <sighs> But, uh, yeah, you know, the offseason has been the offseason. It is what it is. You know, Bill's doing what they do, you know, filling holes with, you know, players who can play. But nothing really to write home about other than Curtis Samuel. And uh, basically just showing up for the draft. You know, best player that falls to him at a position to need, they'll take him. If it's Devondre Sweat at 28, if it's Adonai Mitchell at 28, if it's Chop Robinson, you know, whatever it pops up there, you know, they went and – Filled those spots and made sure that whoever's there, they're comfortable with them. What do you Everybody's think, Dan? Quiet. Yeah, totally quiet. Quiet. Well. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was thinking about what you just said, man. Listen, it's we knew going into it that free agency was going to be lackluster, like not too yeah. exciting. It it really all comes down to the draft, man. Um, I've heard a couple of people want to go defensive tackle. I love. I love sweat. Um, I probably I probably wouldn't be ideal with taking him at 28. I'd probably yeah, rather yeah. wait for the second. But I mean, dude, I'm still very, very high on Mr. A D Mitchell. Would love that. Maybe Brian Thomas, if we can trade up, if at all. But what's most important is that we no longer have a third round pick. So might need to see if we can swing up, maybe look for a safety like Cole Bishop in the third. Uh, but I'm still pretty high on getting a wide receiver. One of my buddies has been really trying to get me into Lad McConkey as well. And so that kid out of UGA, pretty yeah. fast, four three. Plays inside and out. Yeah, he's he plays so inside great. and out. He's pretty versatile. But Good um, hands. stop sleeping on Curtis Samuel, baby. I love that pickup for us. Surprisingly enough, I think he's an upgrade from Gabe Davis. But we still need that big target. So give me AD or give me Xavier Leggett. I mean, think about it. Him. Curtis Samuel had a thousand yard season with Teddy Bridgewater and Joe Brady as his, as his OC. What's he doing with Josh Allen? That's the that's the big question right there. Exactly. Exactly. And another thing I'm looking at, you know, I really would love to see AD Mitchell in the first round. Uh, yeah. Safeties I'm looking at are more fourth and fifth rounders. I like Kalen Bullock out of USC. He's a good guy. I like him he, too. If you've seen his tape, he, he he looks excellent. He's he's great at a fourth round guy. I also like Malik Mustafa out of Wake Forest. That kid's pretty good at safety. And he's local to where you know where you used to live and where I do live. He's he's up there in the Raleigh area, North Carolina. Yeah. 
Uh, I, I like the way the draft kind of lines up for the Bills and who should be there when we pick, but I also like hedging our bets and just making sure that we don't. We're not boxing to a corner at any point in time in the draft, and that that to me is very important because exactly. I like a lot of these late round running backs. Exactly, man. Exactly, like that uh, Ray Davis out of Kentucky. Love him. Love his I like tape. Ray Davis a lot. Worst case scenario, I'm fine with Frank Gore Jr. in the fifth too. Or the I sixth. like Frank Gore Jr. Uh, there's another kid I like out of uh, uh, the kid out of Wisconsin who ran the, the four three at 225 pounds. I think it's uh, Garendo. No, Garendo. Insane. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's I, mean, I, I thought he was going to run a four, four, six. And he ran a four, three. I was like, God damn. Damn, go. four, three at 225, <laughs> man. Hold yeah. No, no Blake Corum. No Blake Corum. I, I, I like Corum, but I don't think he's going to be there. I think I think someone's going to snatch him earlier. He's got uh, I, I see him late fire. second. Yeah. Early a lot third. Of and that's higher than Michigan, too. So I feel like that's going to be something teams are going to have to watch, you know, like that guy has been used a lot through Michigan. So do you want to have a little, little less tread on his tire or not? I think that's a question teams are going to have to ask themselves. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The draft is going to be really interesting. We'll be doing a show on built in Buffalo. Uh, I have been kind of covering the moves here lately. Uh, you know, the, the dolphins been doing, been doing their thing, you know, fairly decently in free agency. Can't, can't get mad at them. Uh, the jets I worry for only because of the injury history. I don't mean to, to dump on Richie. I know he's been getting dumped on enough today. You know, the, the world here to kick your ass, Richie. You don't have to kick your ass too, so I feel you. I'm used uh, to it, man. I don't really care. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it, it comes with being a Jets fan, I guess, but sorry. Yeah, um, the Jets are the only team that gets hurt. Yeah. No, they, no, they did not, not, not get hurt, but get dumped on. Like, you, you, you get dumped on more than anybody here on this channel so far. Uh, easily. Let's be, yeah, let's be real. And that's okay. So, he's built for it, though. I'm built for it, baby. Bring it on. Because yeah. uh, I got my secret uh, weapon coming up next. That's why. Yeah, update. I don't know if uh, you got, all you guys knew, but Dan knows. Uh, my son was in the hospital. He's home. So. Oh, that's well, good, that's, man. Yeah, that's, dude, that's good to hear, man. Your... Yeah, yeah that, that's good. the page. Getting sunny. Let's go. So well, I kept him he... in your prayers, man. Izzy, it's I great to see you, my prayers. Friend. I'm glad that he's good. Hope the family's yes, doing well, man. Salute to you, Izzy. Really do appreciate you. I love you, bro. God bless. Take care. You see, I may be getting dunked on the most, and shout out to Izzy. Who, you get all... dunked on the most? Yeah, but it's all good because enjoy getting dunked on. Right? Uh, there. <laughs> ALC East Roundtable, gentlemen, how are we doing this evening? I'm doing Perfect. good, man. Perfect. Good, good. Now that we got the pleasantries out the way, let's get down to business. Uh. Let me address something uh, Izzy just said. Hey, Izzy, let me tell you something, man. The only thing that needs to calm down is this man Daz Mitchell's freakiness, okay? Because he keeps <laughs> getting freaky on this damn channel with all of this freakiness on this damn channel, okay, man? That's the only thing that needs to calm down, all right? Hey, Dan Mitchell, how many mud drafts is you going to come up with? <laughs> All right, it's over with, Dan Mitchell. You can forget about it. The season is over with for you before it started. All right, you can make all your videos, uh, your mic drafts, all you want to, Dan Mitchell. It's over with. All right, <laughs> cut it out and keep your damn shirt on. All right, <laughs> hey, TV. Let me yes, tell you sir. something, yes, brother. Yes, Let me tell Lord. you yes. something, brother. Yes. You better keep your damn flunkies in check. Doug and CP, whoever the hell they are. All My right? What? Keep your damn flunkies in check. Talking all of that bullshit <laughs> yesterday. All right? Y'all get on your little channel and y'all talk all that crap. Talking about the jet suck. Boy, we better than y'all by miles. By miles. I don't care nothing about old retirement home. Reti hey, man, get your calm and tea ready next season, son, because you're going to need it. We're going to put a whole bunch in you. Of, a whole bunch we of ain't trying to help nothing you talking about. You, you spilled all of that crap of yesterday, trash. and you spilled all of that crap on the huddle, and y'all ain't going to make a dog. Four games for y'all next year. Y'all ain't gonna win nothing but four games to a trash. Y'all are trash. All Man, you ain't gonna do trash. nothing next All year. All you do is talk trash and then have nothing to back it up. Your team got swept <laughs> last year, Loki. Say what? Say what? You still talking about last year? I don't, you I don't still 
Quarterback position, we've always man, been. Cut it out, man. Cut it yeah, out. you know what time it is. Man, cut it out, man. You so y'all got a Hall of Fame quarterback, right? Y'all got a Hall of Famer, right? First of all, you don't have a Hall of Famer. He ain't that. Oh yes, no we do. Oh yes, we do. No yes, we do. Oh yes, we do. And guess what? We got future Hall of Famers coming out that backfield and coming off that receiving line, boy. Oh, you better get ready. God. You better get ready. Because we're going to sweep the hell out, y'all. You best believe that. That's what you said last year. You said last year. It's a whole new year, baby. It's a whole new year. What can you we talk about this? You spew all of them lies Whoa. on that damn channel. And now you want to come up here. Say what? Answer the question. Answer what the kept question. you from sweeping us last year? Quarterback. No, no, no. You said you was going to sweep us. After Aaron Rodgers went down, you said Black Friday. Cool you know that, man. First of all, we had. I, and first of all, we you did the team. I can't help with the team. I can't help that team was trash for three years, man. I can't help that, man. And they knew they was the 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 organization knew they were supposed to get a backup. That's why they righted the wrong this year. They knew that child was trash three years ago. No, no, no. You rooted for that child to beat the Dolphins. I never rooted for that child. Yes, I never rooted for just like you rooted for just like you rooted for Tua. Just you like you rooted for Tua, then come to Indian City, they tour, 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 a tour, 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 tour. I can't help it. 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 I need my committee. I need my. Yeah, then, then to come to the end of the season, you're going to be talking all that crap. Delosky, you bought a Zach Wilson jersey. Tell the people the truth. Never, Stop lying. Never. Never. I'm a, I'm a J E T S Jets, Jets, Jets fan. I'm not an individual yeah, team, man. Man. I don't care yeah, nothing man. about no individuals. I'm a team man. I root for the Jets. I don't root for no individuals. I root for the team. Y'all ain't even making a play, y'all. You're delusional, bro. You ain't even making a play, hey, y'all. Hey, man, that's all cool, man. Hey, man, I ain't even got to address Pat- uh, uh, Patriots Global over there because y'all ain't even worth mentioning. Hey, hello, <laughs> can you hear me down there? It's okay. We'll sneak up on you. We'll sneak up on you. Yeah, you ain't gonna sneak up on nothing. We'll you ain't got no damn game. Your coach is trash, and y'all ain't got no damn quarterback. Oh, did you hey, see Caleb no. Williams throw that seventy-yard hey, ball? No. Oh, it was so beautiful. How many quarterbacks that did that? Sam Wilson, Sam Darnold. We haven't seen a ninety-yard balls. We don't care nothing about it. We gonna still put foot in. Where's the quarterback at? Where's the quarterback? The coach ain't done nothing. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. We we seen we seen old Caleb Williams. We seen him, huh? Yeah. We don't Most care people. nothing about no Drake May. We don't That's care nothing people. about no whoever the hell you get. We gonna put foot in you, huh? Just like you did last we year, right? We gonna put foot in you. Just like last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You damn right. Did you see what happened the last game? <laughs> Did in, you in see what game? happened in the last game? In, in we sent game Belichick on this motherfucking way. The, we sent Belichick on this game. damn way. Huh? Belichick sent himself on his damn way. I'll tell you that. No, no, no. we sent them on this way. J-E-T-S, yes, 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 baby. You better keep drinking that tea, T-D. You better keep drinking it because you're going to need it. Your blood pressure going to go through the roof this year, son, because oh. you're going to need it. Most delusional fans know oh the man. And Richie just be loving it. Yeah, Richie <laughs> loves it. Because he don't have to deal with it. He don't have to deal with it. Awesome. So he's like, all right, let him on in. <laughs> oh, that was so good. I mean. He ain't cooked me. Y'all stop in the chat. All he do is talk with empty promises. To so somebody, you got to back cooked. up what you say. 
Bro, Stop, right when man. you said Tua is the best quarterback in the division, you lose all credibility. Like, right when you say that, you lose every argument. And I don't know why you keep saying it. Like, Even though he don't. plays better than Aaron Rodgers. It, in, it still in goes. Guys, he's still double Let's downing go. on it. Here we go all over again. He's still do He'll go on Twitter and say he's trash, get me rid of this, and blah, blah, blah. But then he'll stand on ten toes and say, yeah, best quarterback in the division. He's going to lead us to the promised true, land. Richie. Two Bro, things can be true, Rich. Trash. Tua Tagovailoa, congrats. He led the league in passing yards. Congratulations. Do you want a cookie? No, he'll yeah. just take, you know, Pro Bowls and stuff. Did Josh Allen go to the Pro Bowl? Several times. The Aaron Rodgers? No, we're talking about last year. Who was the better quarterback in the division? Congratulations. Pro Bowl ain't the, shit, man. The Pro Bowl don't the touch dodge ball other than Pro Bowl. fans don't really? know who good players are. Come on now. Listen, that's all I'm saying. It's it's a beautiful thing. Ugh. King Lowski, thank you for being our final caller of the show. And we appreciate you guys tuning in. Well, apparently I lose credibility because I'm a Jets fan. So there goes I my credibility. Damn. To get smoked this year. You lose credibility, man. Man, who's your worst, who's your least favorite team in the division? T D. My least favorite team? Who do you hate the most? The Bills, but the Jets are so close now because y'all just so delusional, man. And like, you're not. At least, at least the Bills talk trash. Can you at, at least? Can they, I? Can, hey, hey. At least they I can admit I'm delusional. Can you admit you're delusional? I'm not though, cause we right there, Richie. We right there in this. Oh year. my gosh! Luckily, we're ending the show in the next minute or two. I'd go on a ten minute rant of how you're like. I can admit and puff my chest out and say I'm delusional, and I'm okay with that. But you can't admit. All the delusion you spewed for four straight seasons? It's not delusion, though, because for four straight seasons, you've, you've seen us get better. Every time. And, but you've seen us get better and better, and now it's the over-the-hump year. This is it. You said that three years ago, and then again two years ago, but and then again this year. Closer, but we still got closer. We got closer than the years How'd before. How did you get closer? You didn't win one playoff game. Not one. Yeah, Richie, Richie, but you, you know didn't win a playoff closer. game. So yeah, how did you get closer? We had the bill. The bills actually conceded at one point. They knew it was over. We just, you know, our injuries got us. Bro, why can't you admit back. that you're delusional? You say Super Bowl every year. You never even win a. All right, forget it. I'm not gonna waste my time on you. We gotta get out of here. <laughs> Richie's losing hands. Man, man I, I thought I thought I can get TD to just like be objective for once and admit. I something, am but... objective, but y'all gonna learn this year, man. Y'all gonna learn. Y'all gonna learn. Wow, I've heard that one. I feel like I've heard this every All year. Right. Uh, every no, year. But, this is, but this is different than different. This it, is it, like it's different this year, guys. It's, it's different. different. It's different. It's di like, come on, say something that you that haven't said the before. Bills, but the bills are declining, and y'all won't acknowledge that they're declining. Okay, TD, what does that have to do with anything? Even if the, the bills are declining, what are the Dolphins going to do in the playoffs? Say hypothetically, what? they do win the division. The Dolphins yeah. with Tua against the Browns in round one of the playoffs, we'll, or you name we'll which team. We'll have a first what, what round. What do the Bills have any impact on you? We'll have a first round home game in good weather, and we'll get our first playoff win. It don't matter who we play. We'll get our first and playoff then, win. That's what he's concerned about. Just a, just one. No, 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 no. no, no. We're gonna get that win. Well, well, we might have a first round bye. So that first playoff win automatically put us in the AFC Championship. Get it right, bro. Dan, no stop the smirks, bro. Oh, dude. We no. got to get out of here. We're hitting the two and a half hour mark. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another AFC's Roundtable show. We'll see you guys next week on Wednesday night. Thank you all for the generous super chats. Peace out. Love, love you, all. you guys. Have a great night. Let's go, Dolphins. We're going to do it. See how, like, he doesn't even believe that. I do, Richie. I do. This year. Hopefully. Haha, I got it. I didn't end it for that reason.